I like how they try to break the fourth wall by having him become this protagonist in his mind, where oh, yeah. like every oh, yeah. every weapon that he has, they're rooting for him. And then like the the the, the Polar Star dormitory was like, what the fuck? Who do you think you are? Like, get yeah. the shit out of here. Like, how do you even see him think of this shit when he's cooking? <laughs> I like also when they go to the the other noir group and they're like, yeah, he basically forced them to duels. He stole them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I thought like, okay, all I right, thought that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah that, was, that, was good. that part. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Anime Izakaya Podcast, week 10 of the summer 2020 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season of anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stratton. Hello, everyone. Next up, we have Ku. Oh, hello. And finally, we have Sasha. Doppelganger. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so we just have one, I guess, like, one new anime news to go over. Um, so the, the Haruhi... Uh, series you know the, the this the male colony of Haruhi Suzumiya like uh they're getting they're finally getting their next novel after 11 years that's how long or is it nine or I think it was nine years I forgot it's been a long time I've been waiting for this for a long time because the last novel came out yeah 2011 and then the authors went on hiatus and said nothing and I knew absolutely <laughs> nothing happened and like it like it wasn't even like a cliffhanger at the story. Just like just it was just one one arc, and then nothing happened for nine years. So we're not even at the end yet. So I don't know what the hell this guy's doing, but it's finally coming. I think November. It's also getting released simultaneously in English. I'm probably gonna pre-order it because I need to know. So. So so is this show still like is the manga or light novel still going then? Light novel. It it the last light novel was in 2011. Oh boy! And it, and so it's it still going. And it didn't end. Oh boy. Okay. We nice. didn't, like they're still in high school and like we we didn't like solve uh, the the problem I guess yeah sweet so well good for you guys who are fans of the show so and I don't even know like because Kyoto Animation because Kyoto Animation did the original two seasons and there's still like a huge they guess still a season three without like this new this new novel information so I don't I don't know what they're gonna do if they're continue on or not so we'll see. So- no news for the studio about like which studio. I hope it's still Kyoto. I mean, Kyoto Animation. They still have enough material to do with season three for twelve watch, episodes. But they didn't. Do, get... But they didn't do anything for nine years. So, watch. I could easily see you guys getting JC's death. <laughs> <laughs> or this will be what happens to a lot of these old or shows. What, whatever happened to boom, JC's death? Where, whatever happened to like uh, Pomel, like Panic, whatever, like. Be like that too. Where yeah, JC staff I don't think it's JC staff that did Full Metal Pack season four, was it? Really? Uh, well, I'll, I'll figure it out. But but yeah, so so that's big. Like at least big for me. I'm pretty sure a lot of people. It was a classic anime, so so I'm excited. If I can't believe it took him, like he just show out of nowhere after nine years and Full Metal Panic too, man. That's what happened. <laughs> the Full Metal Pack. I was writing other stuff in between. So oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, he was actually doing work. Yeah. So that's just it for anime news. Um, remember, we're heading right into Got a High School. And also, uh, we're recording this on a Monday. So we're actually going to cover two episodes. The one from last Monday and the one that just aired today. So I guess we'll my just... Bad, it was my fault. I Because uh, of the holidays, I was visiting family. So I didn't get back till Monday. So yeah, I apologize. We had to prioritize family Dude. over anime. Sorry, guys. Gosh. I'm sorry. Hope you get taken over by Knox. <laughs> so I guess we'll start first with the one from last week. So just basic recaps when like when um when Jin was tr- uh trying to rescue his grandpa and then he just got baited by the go- double gainer ability and then he did the, he did the um his awesome like was it the the dra- dragon azir kick and then the tournament oh, size when um when uh when Mira got she got her Charuk and it was fucking Lubu and his sword even though Lubu wasn't known for his sword. So, so that's that's our starting point for last week's episode. Yeah. And also, if I remember correctly, Lubu is supposed to have a spear, not a sword. Yep. So I don't know <laughs> where the hell the mistranslation was for that. But and also, uh, like he's he's always on his on his horse too. So. Horse. Yeah, he's always showcased with his horse. So I don't know what's going on here. But I mean, she's got her 
try to use, so it's, it's whatever, but it, it completely threw me off when they show it in this maybe, episode. Maybe this guy was like a distant relative to who we're thinking of. Yeah, and they're Chinese, but this is in Korea, right? So well, I mean, like, Chinese history is so important, in, like in Asia. So you see, you see a lot in in anime too. Like a lot of stuff comes from China, so it's not that. Much they still got it. They still got it wrong, though. Uh, what do you yeah, got it wrong? I don't well, I mean, like between the spear part, but like, sure, yeah, yeah. But like, and also, uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms is a huge. It's a huge thing in like in Asian history, so it's not that unusual. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, it it just threw me off because it was like full of inaccuracies. I thought so, and I don't really see where the ties come in with the the moonlight sword style and her family, and how he came to be like interested in in, in you. So I, I feel like there's there's a lot of explanation that's missing here that should be here to kind of make it like uh, flow better for me. I feel like that's the theme of the show in general. It's right. Just basically, they're fun, they're in a sense speed earning it. Um, and we're missing a lot of uh, the story elements as well. Yeah, I mean the way she met Lou Blue, whatever his name is, Lou Blue. When she's <laughs> that little, <laughs> it's Lou Blue. whatever, yeah. Lou Blue Blue. Uh, when she was just like floating in that ocean, mm-hmm. and then you just hear a voice. It reminded me of the administrator talking to uh, Bam Bond, whatever his name was, and... like the giant turtle. Yeah, remember the giant okay. turtle? And he's like, yep. you got to take the administrator test. He's like, yep. oh, yeah, what do you want? Or when Naruto talks to, you know, the Nine Tails, and the Nine Tails is in prison. So all QB. you see are like the eye. Yeah, QB. Yeah. He's like, oh. So I was just like, where is this coming from? I, I don't know. Um, but why should I care? Because you're, <laughs> you're, you're dying, and all of a sudden now you're floating in water. Like, they didn't set that up whatsoever. So nope. the whole Charyuk thing is completely completely miss uh because they never really explained it how people acquire these powers how they even make these deals with yeah. these beings how do these beings get in touch with them do they hit you up on your cell phone find you an address <laughs> sit down have coffee with you or you know they make sure you go swimming and do i like how they hit, too, you, hit you up they hit you up when they're unconscious Apparently. yeah <laughs> I like how too like like the second tournament like everyone's using chariot and the whole audience just just thinks it's normal. It's just like a normal part of martial arts. Just busting oh, it up. Yeah, the thing oh, is, like, yeah. every time I think of like Chario, or, like, and when I think of something like that, I think of like you know, like the Bankai from Bleach and stuff, where it's supposed to be like this something, like this thing that you're supposed to be like training forever to get, mm-hmm. and it just feels like they just heard about it and they got it, or at least one person of the three that we've seen at least. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just feel like it, it's supposed to, like I don't know. It, I just thought it was like really fast, like how she got it. There's, like you know, kind of like how I Sasha mean, it probably it sounds like since it's a webtoon, it just sounds like the author is making up as he goes along. So I, I think that's where like a lot of the holes in the plot comes from. It's just he didn't think this through. Do we? Do we know? Um, can you? Can you only get one Charyok? Charyok or whatever it's called. Uh, I would imagine I so assume, because supposedly but... each one is like a like a deity from like the Bankai. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Right. Yeah, maybe there can be multiple but ones. That's oh. what it seems like. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you guys happened. the one thing that threw me off in the episode was when um really ripped tan guy was fighting the speedo. <laughs> his voice. I mean, it was explained later in the episode, but his voice. I was like, your voice does not match your character at all. Like, I'm sure that guy's a good voice actor in Japan, but this just did not fit for me. And then obviously they did the whole doppelganger thing. Yeah, but... also thought it was pretty funny too how the audience was like they were so scared of this bodybuilder. It's like, damn, Korea, you've never seen a bodybuilder before. Nah, I yeah, they uh... seen that, but it's <laughs> never mind. Yeah, <laughs> not like that, Korea. <laughs> <laughs> nope. That's messed up. I, I I love the part where uh, Jin shows up at the end, and then Han's like. I've never seen him look that mad before. I'm like, this is literally the same facial reaction he's had all <laughs> show long. Yeah, like, uh, it was pretty sick though to basically see him like when he actually did like the, the markings. And yeah, he basically he like, he's like, well, yeah, where he basically oh, yeah. is like, now he's like, where he's just like, now I'm not going to feel anything for the next hour. I was like, oh shit. And uh, I mean, I, I, I thought the fight was, was fine just because like we didn't actually get to see him fight the doppelganger, but they had, they had it in a sense side by side where he do, was doing like the exact same stuff. Yeah, uh, I thought that was I thought that was still pretty neat, and it was like the first time I got pretty hyped just to see what what Jin could do. Um, because like when he first did like the markings, and he basically because you know obviously the first time, I was so like hyped up for him, and he just ends up fucking it up completely, and we don't even get to see him, so it's just kind of like blue balling us uh, for mm-hmm. as the audience. 
and then uh, we Good actually point. got this, and then we actually got to see, like, in a sense, like, in a way of which, like, what he can do as, like, when he's doing the marks, even though that was basically just, like, like the painkiller marks. I don't even know if it actually buffed up his, like, strength in any way, or if he basically just numbed himself. Uh, I think he probably just numbed himself. Um, but hey, we go from blue balls to blue dragon guys, That's and there's two of them. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. So, so was the payoff worth it? Uh, probably not. But, but next, yeah. but, but the next episode though, we get three blue also, dragons. Right? Is that is that the new thing now? And Yu Gi Oh right? shows up. <laughs> what? It's gonna be awesome. Blue eyes, white dragon. Blue eyes, white dragon. Whatever. It is. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like everything's just being ripped off. Like, um. Moon style girl, when she gets her superpower, she just turns into Tamaki from Fire Force. With she just grows brothers. those ears. <laughs> like that, that's it. I'm like, okay. And then uh yeah. But I, the sword, but the sword's not wooden anymore. It's an actual sword. Oh, oh. It's it's not a <laughs> boat. It's a boat. Uh it just I don't know. And then <laughs> with the, the twin dragon thing, okay, he literally murdered that guy. But you know, nobody bats an eye because he's Jin. But when Shark Guy goes insane on his opponent, oh, let's call in the authorities and let's let's rein him back. You know, I just think it's a little bit hypocritical. My boy, uh, I can't even pronounce that guy's name. I'm gonna lie. It's like Jaggle Shark. <laughs> just call him that. Well, just call him Shark. Just call him. Shark. Just call him the Park Shark. But, oh, I like that Park, park Shark. shark. Park uh, Shark. <laughs> Because of that one time he was at the park, park. <laughs> dude, <laughs> or P Shark, whatever. I don't know. Oh, he man. literally takes him by that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was an all right episode. I mean, I, I have I, more thoughts. I, I, I still like the sword, even though it doesn't make sense with Lu Bu. But I thought the sword is pretty badass, even though it's pretty like convenient to have the, your dad's sword become a legendary treasure. But it's still pretty cool. Yeah. That sword betrayed her so fast. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did like how it changed colors. It went from blue blue to boo hoo. So okay. it was something, cool. something blue, something blue. something blue. I it, 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 I have more thoughts, uh, but I want to talk about them in the next episode. So uh, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, have like, much, I, mean, I really don't have much yeah, more to say for this one episode, either. So, yeah, either, so yeah like, do, doppelganger. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> so I guess we can move on to the one that just aired today. So the actual hype episode. This one was pretty hype. Yeah, it was. It was awesome. So take oh, away, yeah. Sash, or yeah. Yeah. or or yeah, right, I just want, I just yeah. want to say with this, ahead, cool. with this episode, they just blew it up with all the special effects. You get to see one of the. The, the the six guys or whatever like show off all his national treasures and you get to see the the leader of the Nox guy i believe show his like omega uh Charyuk, which was like pretty damn impressive i think that's probably the only way he could have taken out uh like jin's grandpa the sword yeah, yeah that giant sword in the sky sword the and, God. Then, yeah. Yeah. and then he has his followers there so they can summon the um like that that black entity and i thought I don't. I don't know if it means anything, but then the the, the engraving that's on the sword, like I don't know who the, his son is. Uh, he came before God or something like that. Probably Lu Blue. No, <laughs> I don't think it's Lu Blue, <laughs> but it's, it's it's possible, right? Dude, when that uh, I don't know when that kind of like the, just just like the drunk guy showed up with like all of his like followers. I immediately oh, thought shit. like the hype guy. I immediately thought like the hype man. Oh well, thank you for yeah, the I... was it? Thank you for the raid. Holy, it's, okay. We're interrupting this podcast. Thanks, we got a huge raid, so thanks yeah. for. Raid. Yes, thank you for uh, Banyo's raid. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. Thank you. I just want to mention. I just want to mention too that um, uh, I thought it was pretty funny that like he's summoning this huge Chinese sword, but he's using an Omega symbol to do all this. So, <laughs> like. Sorry, sure. David. You're the you're the history guy, so you're gonna have to go into that. I, yeah. I didn't kiss it at all. Dude, it's Ome- <laughs> the Greek letter Omega. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just David, saying. You're making it sound like we know this, dude. I'm just yeah. saying it's pretty it funny. Generous, bro. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Okay. So we had a huge uh, raid. We're talking about yeah. God of High School right now. We, the one yeah. that just happened today. So sorry for spoilers, because we yeah we go over um whatever just just happened. So there's there's gonna be spoilers in this discussion. So. Yeah, we talk about we basically just talk about the current season of anime that's airing every episode. So. Uh, we apologize if we're spoiling, any, spoiling anything. If there's any shows that we're talking about you don't want to hear, feel free to mute us yeah. or just tell us the, or, you know, 
<laughs> so that's basically what we do. We have a few uh, episodes of shows that we we're do. basically recording like for as well. the podcast. So yeah, yep. yeah. So, yeah basically we have, so yeah. this is all. So thanks for the follows. But yeah, it's yeah thank spoilers. you guys so much for the follows. Yeah, yeah. We well, we spoiled everything, but um, we yeah, will the main come thing. over to your house and literally raid you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know about that, but <laughs> yeah, uh, that's yeah, uh, it's coming to get blank, sir. Uh, I wouldn't say it out loud. Uh, oh. But no, yeah, it's it's uh like we mainly just kind of do this for the podcast. Uh, we just like just stream our our thing just to, for the fun of it as well, and we just kind of like meet up and just kind of just have fun. But anyway, sorry, we'll kind of we'll break yeah. right back into this. Yeah. Um, I like the the whole thing with the hype man with like the like the drunk guy with his like little uh with his group. I immediately thought like, oh damn, this guy is just like a. I, th- I thought that guy was awesome. No clue about who he was, nothing like that. Right. But I immediately thought of like the uh, the guy from Fire Force. Where he just like had his own kind of crew behind him, and it was basically where they're just like chanting and just doing all that stuff. Oh, and then, right, uh, right, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And, then, and then basically this guy's just dude, I have no clue of anything with these powers of like what they're doing at all because it's just it doesn't make any sense like like what because we're just we just know that they're just like it's just like gods versus gods now, mm-hmm. and but it's just like we don't actually know because I think the only one we've seen is Nox with the giant sword and like that. The, the black figure they, they just said they just said the god i think but they didn't actually say yeah. the name of who that god was but i think we can just safely assume it's that's like the god of Mars. whatever god they're like they're worshiping whatever yeah as a cult right yeah yeah so i'm guessing that is um i also thought we, we also got to see like kind of like the main um i forgot the guy's name like the the, the cross in the middle of his forehead Park yeah we, we got to kind of we got to see his defensive magic but that's about <laughs> it though so far um, but I thought it was kind of neat, like how they were having like their own kind of like o- their own war, in a sense, like while like the the God of High School thing was going on. Because I first thought like, oh God, they're gonna blue ball us again. They're gonna stop it right before like mm-hmm. this stuff actually happens, and then they're just gonna focus on the fight that's going on. But it's in the, but instead they did it like at the same time with very good animation, right? Because uh, dude, Mappa man, they can do it. <laughs> like just like the, the the fluidity of the like the motions during the fight was just it was so it was so awesome. I mean, I think the only thing that threw me off this in this show or in this episode was the fact that the music wasn't really like, like, like matching perfectly with the animation they were showing when he was playing the drums or, or whatever. Uh, so that threw me off a little bit. But I thought that whole segment was pretty nice because you have all the, uh, all the commissioners just going all out with the Charter Ukes, and then you have the two main guys fighting it out, uh, trying to. Like you got Park trying to protect the uh, the tournament stadium, and you got that one guy from Knox just going all out with his gods and the giant sword in the sky. So I thought they were like going balls to the wall this episode. So I thought that was really nice. All right, Sasha, I think I, I need to hear your thoughts because we keep interrupting. Yeah, you. sorry, Sasha, we can't. We just kind of keep talking. We just fucks keep talking. Won't so. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. My bad, day. No, no, no. I was waiting to hear some some thoughts because uh, let's just say this. I think this show has definitely fallen into the lake of mediocrity. Uh, great, great animation, very slick. But ultimately, I just thought everything was pointless. Like, I just don't care. Who, who cares? Like, that guy pulled out his Joker, Char Yuk, just started chopping up those bodies. All right, man, you did that like three episodes ago. It's all always the same play. Um, honestly, if, if I, I was able to go back and direct the show and kind of cut it together, I would start off with... First, we see Knox. We see this like dark chanting group, and they're looking for this key, whatever it is, to activate their god or to defeat everybody in the planet. So, boom, we got their motivation. Then, at the same time, we see all the tournament directors get together and they plan out the tournament. And okay, so now we know their motivation. And in the meantime, we see the high school kids getting into the tournament. And now we know all three, and then you can change between the stories. Because honestly, I feel like with with the past two episodes, they've completely ruined the plots for the main characters. Like I no longer care about them. I would rather learn about everybody else in the story besides them. Um, so for me, the show is just like, I, I love that guy with his drum crew and just, you know, look like a drunk. It, it, he, he reminded me of the guy from Bleach. The guy always wears a hat and trade Ichigo in the beginning. Um, yeah. Uh, yep. I, got, I got those feels too. Yeah. Urahara. Yeah. Yep. Urahara. Thank you. So, like I said, I love the animation. I just think the show has completely butchered the setup and it's burning through the story. So now it's just like I'm going to turn my mind off during this show and just watch it for the sake of 
giant swords and crosses and things burning and Joker sights. So for me, honestly, the show has taken a major step back because really? it was treading, it was trending towards that way. But yeah, honestly, it's just because it, it's pointless action now. And the thing is, when you have reasons for the action that's going on, I am so much more invested in the show right now. Okay, Park Moo Jin and this guy who looks like basically Jin with dyed white hair. I, I really don't care. Like you, you show up in your hood and you're gonna drop the sword, bro. Come on, man. Like I just it, it's just it's weak sauce. It's weak writing to me. It feels like and then Naruto Sage Mode showing up at the end. Uh, what the hell was that? Like I'm, <laughs> no, I'm about like to get beaten. Too. So I'm gonna talk to a fox and randomly have eyeshadow on. Like I'm sorry, guys. The sh- the but show. He's I still the key see though. Shark Boy. Yeah, <laughs> like, he's, like, just, he's one of the nine tails. You know. Even that revelation, it, it's like, okay, he, he's the key. What what makes him the key? Because he wears that tiger vest and he's somehow linked to uh, his grandfather? Or was it just to like throw the plot twist that we thought it was going to be Jin and his starry eyes? That's the key. I don't know, guys. It's a uh, uh, Han's fight I just thought was lame. I think Jin learning people's moves without any reason or logic behind it was really lame. Um, what? Well, I think. Yeah, it's just. Okay. Uh, so for yeah. like uh, was it for the key? Yeah. I think we'll get we'll know more about it, kind of like what it what it means. Because I'm I'm assuming like uh, because we don't know if it's what like just like the like the fox if he's like a god or if it's basically if he's if he represents something else. We have no idea. So, I don't know because they didn't explain the god system, and I'm not yeah, saying you have true. to go in depth about it. But think- bro, give us some insight. You make a deal with the gods. They you know you give up a certain amount of your life, whatever it might be um right it just i'm telling you guys so much potential i think it's been butchered and i think it's beyond repair at this point i mean but that can be said about anything that's translated to anime if you really want like like the full story you have to read the original source and i would disagree i think uh tower of god and this show have both suffered mightily and i think probably it's the episode count let's be honest Mm -hmm. so right um there's so many enemies that pull it off extremely well. It's just the pacing itself. There's there's no setup for anything. It just jumps straight to it. Like where most episodes of most anime, you'd have a couple of episodes that lead up to a, you know, uh, this uh, what do you call it, climax. It feels like the show just hits a climax without actually building it up properly. So to me, it just it, it's it's style without any substance, which is the bad part. Right. But. Like I said, I, I, I'll still watch it. I think it's enjoyable, but it definitely goes into like a fire force category where you're like, okay, so the action is taking ahead, uh, is, is coming in first place over the story, which you'd like it to be equal, ideally. Um, so uh, just, I mean, I mean, yeah, no, I hear you. But, and then like to bring to that point, uh, like for me, I feel like this is just. You're just looking at it for the action, kind of like Dragon Ball in a sense now, where you don't really expect yep. the plot. You just expect to see some nice action scenes and you know just move, move on well, with your life. Honestly, for for the show though, I mean, I definitely it, it kind of gets like the was it the the Tower of God vibes, where we're miss where it's it just feels like they're missing so much of the story and they're just kind of focusing on like what Sasha says, like it, it's definitely taking the fights first, or at least the, the action scenes. And they're definitely kind of skimping on like the just like the information of just like kind of like the back, just the backstory of characters or the world kind of like world building without just like actually like going too much in depth on it, which is kind of it's which is too bad. But I'm still kind of enjoying like dude, what Jin basically just like busting out like the moves where he's like he's just basically just copying like he's able to just copy people's moves. Mm-hmm. I thought was uh, one it was kind of unexpected. I'm just kind of thrown out there. What I thought was actually uh, I thought was uh, really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, yeah, uh, Epio. I, I think that's what his guy, the guy's name. Right. Oh like, yeah. We're, we're, yeah. We're basically who's maybe first kind of like thinking if he's like I was getting like Deku vibes as well, kind of like with uh, was it Todoroki, where he's just like he was just like coaching him kind of through things, just basically, and then they kind of do like the little slight flashback with his grandpa, where um, where he's basically just like you gotta train this guy. This guy don't know shit. And then mm-hmm. um, where I, then it was, that, I thought that was actually kind of like a really good moment as well, even though it like Epio was like what maybe three years old at that time or something right with that flashback but yeah no like i said th- there's so much lost potential here right uh and slash already touched on this point so i'm not going to reiterate it but yeah they, they have so much that they could work with but i feel like they're just not doing this justice so it, it's a little disappointing 
Um, I just hope that with the next, like not for this show, but for the next adapt adaption that they do, uh, no I hope they actually do a just next. We got no less no less, coming next uh, next season. Solo solo leveling, like all the famous manuals that are out there. Like, I hope they do it justice next time. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't stick with a grain of salt, I suppose. Yep. Uh, it's it's sad to say, but I, I thought the show was going to go in a really great direction. But you know what? It's uh, it's one of those. It's been burned by the transition to an anime. Mm. Like, I, I think his grandpa, that would have been like a three or four episode arc in any other anime. Like, okay, this is the part where we get to learn about his grandpa. But now, you know, he's he's, he's armless. And probably, he's going to destroy everybody. <laughs> he's still taking all giant swords. Yeah, it'd be fine. Yeah, he's but good. I, I kind of first thought that that old guy, or that you know, kind of like we would show up like drinking, because you know we have no idea even who this guy was, and they just threw him in there. I kind of I first thought that was the grandpa, and then I saw both arms. No, yeah. I mean they, they did showcase <laughs> like they did showcase like each of the uh, the six leaders or whatever the six figures like uh, I think a few episodes back. I don't. But remember again, any of that. They don't, yeah. right? But they don't like explain any of these guys. They just right. say one of the sixes and then like what their like specialty is, and then that's it. And then well, here we are in this other tournament now. So yeah, yeah. I, I see. I would love to have more background with the sixes. Like uh, they did a really cool shot. In, I don't know if it was this past episode or the one right before it. Where basically, oh, it was the one before it when Jin reveals his blue eyes dragon. Uh, they sh- quickly pan to a shot of the old guy, and he's like. Uh, probably like hinting at the fact that he's missing his arm because maybe Jin's grandfather used the exact same move or a variant of it. And that's the type of stuff where you're like, ooh, give me more of that, right? So give me some more insight into what happened to the characters potentially or why we're even here. But when it just goes from, I've got a giant scyther. Oh, I've got a giant dragon. Oh, I got a cross. And then all of a sudden, guess what? There's a big giant black shadow that comes out of it. It puts the hands down. But there's this guy on the street corner playing pots and pans, and he can <laughs> stop it. And, and that's basically what the show is in a nutshell for me. I'm like, dude, give me some context for the love of God. But anyways, I like I said, five. enjoyable, but uh, yeah, ultimately... Yeah, I- pointless it's yeah it's gotta be one of those shows there you have to turn your brain off so <laughs> which is sad oh well, if only brian was here i feel like he would defend the show oh, yeah. so much more oh yeah we, we definitely oh, yeah. brian would defend it brian, Dude, we oh, we miss you, brian. oh yeah. god come back um i nothing else though yeah yep. all right yeah so yeah. that's gonna be sorry sorry chad no- sorry chad normally our conversations are better but uh this hasn't happened before, so we're trying to like uh, kind of stay in the chat as well and yeah. kind of just say thank you again for all the follows. Yeah, yeah, much so, appreciated, uh, honestly. Yeah, this I swear crazy. we're more competent than this. <laughs> Normally, <laughs> shout out to. Yeah, I um, swear we're not. Yeah, thank you again. Uh, was it uh, Banyas or Banyas? Uh, yeah, uh, Banyas. Yeah, but thanks for the raid. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm you... taking like the, the Serbian accent. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. Listen, hey, all you guys that stay on and like and follow us, Shredden said he's going to send you each a $28 paycheck, okay? <laughs> yeah, just no, no, stay no. tuned. I know, right? <laughs> we, we can't say which currency it's going to be in, but <laughs> just, just stay with us. You got 28 pesos coming your way, <laughs> sir. One day, one day, it'll pay off. <laughs> That's right. We swear, and then that day comes by, it's like, oh, dude, we were told we were going to get some money. And then basically, like, this says, like, this guy hasn't connected for 60 days. <laughs> But anyway, oh, okay, we can move yeah. on to the next show. Yeah. I apologize. All right. No, it's all right. But, you're, but you, probably have to, you should probably cut this out in the podcast when you. When nah, you nah, we'll, it. Leave it. We'll, we'll leave it. We'll, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. We'll leave it. it. We'll leave it. All right, fine. <laughs> so that's it for uh, Got a High School, and then we're, our next show we're talking about is um, Fire Force. Um, oh, I'm so, so glad this arc is finally done. So yeah, we're finally leaving China. I guess. <laughs> um, I guess I've actually I actually kind of liked this episode because it shows more of the lore because I was not really expecting to reveal that the first pillar was in Amaterasu. So I actually like where they're going with that. And actually it makes sense what they're doing with like the cult, why they're so why they're so pissed off at everyone because because they're basically being used. So and also it was the first time we saw the, the evangelist too. Like like I appreciate sure the first time we've seen anything that of her. So that's really interesting. Right, spoiler alert. Well, my uh, oh yeah, spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. Oh, spoilers. We're, yes. we're, we're talking. Yeah, we're we're talking about the the show that just aired or the episode that just Fire aired. Force. So. Yeah. Fire Force. Yeah. Um, I got a prediction. Yeah. I th- I think Raffles, the one who brought them the 
sparkly light or whatever it was. I think Raffles is Evangelist. Raffles? What? So you remember when Not- Victor's like the story of how the uh, everything was burned down and then there was this guy who who took everybody over and found the special fire and they oh. called him Raffles and I was like Man, you know Raffles. Uh, that's one second, Sasha. Uh, the, our our tra- Treyarch. I'm sorry, dude. Like we were spoiling uh, Fire Force Three. We should have, yeah, mentioned that we we're talking about spoilers. Yes. So, our bad. Yes. yes. This is all spoilers. Is our podcast is all spoilers. spoilers. Yeah. We're talking about because we we're because yeah we're doing the week by week discussion. So all spoilers here. So yeah, yeah. My bad to anyone we, who's like who who got spoiled we, by this week's. We do. Don't worry, guys. We, Shinra gets leg cancer, and it just goes really bad. <laughs> We do. There are other episodes we've done for like kind of like fun pod, uh, fun ones in the in the in the in the past. But our main podcast is just where we're talking about it's every week by week, like week discussion. Week. So yeah, yeah. Yep. so full on spoilers. Yeah, we meet up every week and talk about this. Yeah. Usually on Sundays. Today, yep. usually not on Mondays because it's a holiday. Here. Yeah, it was a holiday. I was out of town, so everybody kind of moved uh, moved it to a Monday. So yep. Sometimes okay. we wear baby oil. Uh, I don't, but maybe we'll that's catch Sasha different. do. That, that, that's on a different stream, guys. This is why Sasha yeah. doesn't have his video cam on, but he's yep. usually covered in baby oil. No, no. If you hear some slipping, it's sliding. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not me. <laughs> oh. Anyway, sorry, guys. Okay. Yeah, I interrupted um, Sasha. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, no, we'll, you're good. We'll, well, from now on, we'll we'll basically just say like you know spoilers, just you know incoming. Damn, All right. So. Well, these aren't, aren't actual spoilers. This is just my theory when we go down the rabbit hole. And my theories are always 100% <laughs> correct. Yeah. Oh, definitely. All definitely. You, so, you and your Raffles. Yep. Um, so I think Raffles is the story of the evangelist and how the evangelist came to be. And then obviously they enslaved everybody and <laughs> put them in giant nuclear power plants. Just like in real life. Yep, just like in real life. Just like just like Full Metal Alchemist, you know, to create a philosopher's stone, you gotta murder a ton of people. Here you just gotta murder people who have really good flame powers. Not including uh what was it? Leaky flame? Pointy flame? Uh, what was the what was the what was the flaming ink? Dude, I'm talking about yeah. Flaming ink. <laughs> oh, okay. ink. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you lost yeah, me there yeah, for a while, ink. so Thank you. I, 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 no, Ku's got my back. I thought you watched a different episode. For sure, for sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, like, Sasha brings a big point. Like, it kind of leads us to the point, I think we've been talking about it for a while, right? Like, maybe the church is hiding something. Like, uh, cause it's, oh, it's, you know, it's, I don't, it's really obvious people, when, like, when it's, like, a cult in a sh- anime, right. it's always, like, the cult always it's knows. It's always the, the religion. Tr- it's, yeah. The religion's yeah. always bad, and the cult knows the truth. And so, and so when, when, um, when Victor Every says, time. like, oh, you think the church is hiding something? I'm like, no shit. <laughs> It's an anime. Right. They're always hiding something. Yeah, so I guess the group isn't really anti-hero, but it's anti-church. And that's what they're fighting against at this point, right? But then do you think that Shimmer is going to turn over too and then join Victor in, the, in their group? No, he's probably going to do like the the anime protagonist thing where he, he just saves everyone. Like he destroys right. the church and then saves the pillars. At the same, unless, unless they do something like some of the pillars actually die or they actually get sacrificed. Yeah, because I really hope like the fifth player girl gets sacrificed because no one cares about her. Oh yeah, so dude, I forgot right. about her. It's been so long. I feel bad for the first oh, pillar girl yes. because like because she gets revealed as as one cycle, but like I think right. she's probably like been in pain and like we don't even know how long it's been because um the the reactor in China I think I think that's been gone since the the cataclysm for two hundred fifty yep. years. Yeah, yeah, so we don't know. And they say like Amaterasu was built maybe shortly after. So maybe that girl mm-hmm. in Amaterasu was like has been just as long. So Okay. Yeah. Kind of switching gears, I, I wanna mention um I really think Shinra would be the best psychologist because this guy, <laughs> you come to him with a problem, he just turns those feet on fire and just pelts you in the chest and takes you back into time, time. so you can just find out about it. Oh, okay. like, that was the best anime it. logic ever. If he had the blessing, though, oh my god! Like constantly, I, it's just like, I, how do you beat that guy? Dude, they're doing, they're doing you the just, same. You just go back in time. Dude, the whole back in time, time travel thing. Like, it's just like <laughs> season one, the whole like quantum physics and faster than light stuff. But I, I'm pretty sure they're getting it wrong because you don't go backwards in time; you go forwards. No, 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 David. It's, it's anime. It's chance, always yeah. right. Like Dude. it makes sense to me, so it's gotta it, be legit, right? Anime has their own logic, so right? It, oh, so it, by 
it's like by that law, it's fine. Listen, we are talking about this anime is such a high concentration of intelligence that we have a talking <laughs> mole that said, I'm going to be a hero by, by digging a thousand holes. <laughs> Man, you ain't doing shit, bro. <laughs> You're gonna die a lonely life with that crow pecking at your dead yeah, body. Why you? Why you gotta hit on the mole, dude? The mole's trying his yeah, best. He did man. nothing, man. What's wrong with the mole? <laughs> the mole is like, I'm useless, and he goes, "It's okay, bro. I'm a hero. Just call me." And he's like, "I don't need to call you. I'm a dig holes for a living, man." And you're like, dude. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. yeah, but it was it was kind of cool though to see like when uh so with the even uh, even jealous uh, even evangelists. They came in when after the Great Cataclysm, right? Or was it that's before? What, that's what the story is told. It was after. No, it was okay. the, 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 the Cataclysm, whatever happened. And then uh, that, that dude came. The rift. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, but what I want to know is where did the rift, like, like who is, like, yeah. where is this rift? Where did it come from? Like, how it came, what, yeah. Or how, yeah. It, how it even came to be, yeah. Right. So I'm sure we'll find out later. Yep. Right. Right. We got to. Well, yeah, we do. I mean, but like I, I agree with David. The lore is definitely where the show is going to get better because that's the only place where we've got some story left to squeeze out. Yeah, right. um, but I, I'm curious to see it, right? Because there's going to be a high level of corruption in the government. Who's actually working with them? Who's not? The sacrifices and the arrows. Because a lot of those guys have arrows for moves. And by a lot of those guys, I just mean that one guy. So <laughs> I'm very, I'm very curious to see that as well. I, I think the show needs more Joker. I'm a big fan of just these like middlemen who don't work for anybody, which is why I also like Hisoka and Shark Boy. Mm-hmm. So I'm very, very curious to see when Victor, he come back, <laughs> he attack. Um, uh, I, I mean, I'm still, um, waiting, I'm still waiting for the hype between him and the uh, the first captain. Oh, because, yeah. Because it was in the OP, so I'd assume it has to show up here too now, right? Uh, I'm going to guess that's going to be the second half. I don't think we're going to get this uh, this one. Um. But I mean, dude, I, I'm liking Licht a lot more, or Licht, 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 uh, Licht. Yeah, it's like German Victor Licht. Yeah, yeah. That, that guy's awesome. He's definitely like, he, like right behind Arthur. He's got to be my second favorite. Like he has his own little thing that's going on. That's awesome. Uh, and um, I'm pretty sure one of the because one of the companies, it's like it's either like the, it's either directly connected to the church or it's like one of the. I think it's like directly connected to the government. So yeah, it's. One of the companies is like super corrupt, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna fight one of them later on. So, I mean, I want to say it's either the the first unit or uh, the third, which is I think it was Giovanni that was leading that. But um, I want to say Giovanni's like the like the main focus, but I'm sure that the first has something going on behind the scenes as well. It could easily be that way. Yeah. Sorry, bro. Uh... <laughs> a lot of a things little, just happened. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, we're really distracted. Um, but yeah, <laughs> craziness. Uh, no, it's. I'm actually kind of interested to see like if that whole number thing, if it's actually gonna be pie, if like with Arthur just With like Arthur. pulled it out of his ass. Yeah, if it's actually going to be that, or if it's gonna be something else. If it's if he just like happened to just say pie just because it was a bunch of numbers, or I'm 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 gonna assume they're gonna, the numbers are gonna mean something more than just having it be pie. Well, it has to be a pie, but what I don't get, which is what I really hate it, was the fact that they they just blew it off in a comedic fashion, right? Like, at the end, Arthur was saying all this shit from reading the numbers, and at the end, he's like, oh, what is pie? What is that? I studied the round table all this time, and that's how I came to know of pie. <laughs> it's like, where does this even come from, man? I mean, I, I was going to – there was so much hype behind that, too, when they ended the episode at that, where he's like, oh, yeah, this this is just pie, you know? And then they just they didn't play out. They didn't work with that at all. They just like left it. So, welcome to the second season, fifth pillar. Oh, so hype! Oh, it turns out it's just a very emo, emo person. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, what's that? We could potentially have one of their members die horribly to a demon by getting stabbed straight through the heart. Oh, hey, no, this guy has just a really small body. Oh, oh, okay. I mean. Unfortunately, this is one of the shows, besides, like Stratton mentioned, the first episode where it was about the calendar, that was pretty hilarious. The humor has just been, like, awfully timed. So I, it, they better fire that one writer they have who's just like, hey, guys, <laughs> we could use some comedic timing in the show. Who one could help writer, us out? writer, Pritchard's the author. And no, 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 not, no, it's not no, one dude. writer. Dude, it's, it's that in, one It's author. the intern. It's the intern's fault. We'll just let me in. He's like, 
I got you, Ochiro Sensei. Right here, we we could just see he he sells potatoes, and his mom gonna ask him for the potato. I think that'd be funny. He's like, God, I hate you, but I married your sister, and uh, your dad's gonna <laughs> kill me if I don't put this in the show. I'll so. put this later when the kids aren't watching. <laughs> I want to cut your face, but uh, I'll just put you in here as this old man <laughs> who enjoys getting burned. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's got dark real quick. Holy shit. Yeah. It looks um, like you need some, some flame in your life, sir. Some fire. Oh, there's, um, that there's, I do. There's one part in the opening that I'm hoping that happens soon that I'm pretty sure it's trying to get hyped for. So. Spoilers? It's in the opening, so... It's, oh, okay. I'm just saying, like, spoilers. So, <laughs> okay. it is, I mean, it's like any other opening that spoils, so. Some more, okay, gotcha. So, so That's I, fine, I watch everything then. So, I'm pretty sure, I think, if that happens next arc, I think it'll be, it'll be we'll be on an upturn, but, like, hopefully we get these, like, little mini, mini arcs out of the way. I mean, you got it at this point, right? We're on episode oh. 9. And there's only 24 episodes this season. There, so. this has got to be the mini arc. Like they're, they're like I, I'm assuming that like the last few episodes for like this before it kind of does like that that break. Right. This has got to be setting up for next season. It's got to be right. <laughs> it's what we're two three episodes left before like yeah. the break. Well, I don't know if they're gonna take a break. I think I think Fire Force is continuing on the fall season. I'm pretty sure. So are they? Oh, that's good. Yeah, because now that you have like a goal in mind, right? You went to China to figure out what started all this, and then now you have a clear vision as to what to do, who you gotta go after. So they they gotta just push forward with this and then just just let it develop. I, I don't see any way they can drop in any more filler episode. Hmm. But I mean, yeah. I don't know. I've I've been wrong before, so I'm just not gonna get my hopes up and just have it just blow up in my face. Okay, so, so here's like with this show with uh, like with uh, God of High School as well. Like animation, like the action is always like number one. Kind of like you know Sasha's mentioned before, and then story is like always secondary. Even though, uh, I mean, I think we definitely got more of with Fire Force than we have God of High School, just because Fire Force has had uh, we have like maybe two, was it 48 episodes to work with instead of just 12. Right. Or at least I'm just saying like total from what we've been is at least been guaranteed. Yeah. So but I don't know. I, I still like the, I still like the show. It's it's uh I just need more Arthur though. <laughs> yeah. I think I just first half go ahead, David. I'll just say I I think at least hopefully hopefully based on the opening, I think it's gotta go like yeah, uphill from here. So here's hoping. <laughs> but I don't think I got anything else. Yeah, no, I think that's it. Right. Yep, I'm just waiting. Second half of the first season was when it picked off, picked up. Second half of this season, I think it's where it's also going to pick up. So I'm just trying to get through these moles and crows. Yeah, the beginning was so good, and then it had like a little bit of a delay here, but then I'm, it's going to pick up just like last season. Mm. So, but right, don't yeah. end the stream, David. Yeah, don't I end the stream. I won't, I won't, I won't. <laughs> so that's got to be it for Fire Force, and then we're going. And now we're going to move on to ReZero, and. Cool, like like I said every week, man, this is killing these cliffhangers are killing me. Like oh my oh, god, this god. episode was another banger, way more than last week's episode, and oh god. I mean, I don't even know what they're trying to do at this point. They they haven't solved shit. <laughs> they introduced like four of the other witches. Yep. Or yeah, yeah, four of the other witches, or not new ones, but three new ones, and then you got uh the, the witch of envy coming back. Um, so we got, what was it, Typhoon? Uh, Minerva uh, is the rat, Minerva. and then Daphne is the um, gluttony. Gluttony one, right. So, yeah, and it, and it feels like these guys are kind of like the, 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 the seven, like the seven witches or whatever, like Trinity Seven. Yeah, well, I mean, where they're kind yeah, of they're the, all based the opposites. Off. No, oh, no, yeah. like they're they're opposites of their their sins, right? Like you got like Raph who who came in destroying shit, but she was trying to heal Subaru, and then you got the one of Pride who was trying to say like, did you commit any sins? And if you did or not, you're gonna get hurt when she touched you or some shit like that. And then you got Gluttony who's who's all constraint, so she can't really do what she's set out to do, right? Which is to consume everything that she can. She's restricting herself, so. It, it kind of leads me to believe that every one of these witches, they're gonna enact the opposite of their sin. So, yeah, that, that was my take from it. I'm just really surprised. Yeah, they just showed up randomly because it, it happened with no warning. Because it was supposed to be only Daphne, and then the two other people showed up. So, 
right. I don't know. I don't know what's the significance of that. If they're maybe not this arc, but maybe it's supposed to set up for something later. If like they're it's gonna be important soon. I don't know because because I feel like at this point it's kind of constrained to this case now, which is them trying to solve uh like the witch envy's uh wandering yeah like where like i guess she's going to the mansion now so not only are they adding more they didn't close any of the other like, like problems that they're having before like it all like this whole thing like it should have been with like a ketna this whole time and we just added right. all the other witches we had to get the witch of gluttony because the stupid rabbits was one of the things mm -hmm. that just shows up randomly in and trying to solve the stupid barrier to solve like rem basically so again like so many like this like i i mean i still enjoy the lore but like there's so many loose ends and i don't know yeah i can't i, can't, I guess i would still say it's a good thing because i'm still really invested in the story but like um know. but to to talk to touch base with your point though cliffhangers this whole fucking season it's is gonna be nothing but cliffhangers until part two comes out and then hopefully we can solve one of the problems that they currently have i feel like like it's like it's it feels worse than um last season's cliffhangers because last yeah. week last season's felt repetitive but this one just they just they're all new and they keep bringing new problems so it's just it's stacking on right. the problems so i don't know and like it's really, okay, like the whole Satelia thing showing up too. Like, I don't know, was that because like because Subaru kept saying all that in the dimension, and somehow it reached her outside? Is that what summoned her? Or I think that's what did it. Okay, <clears throat> just because, like, I want to say the only reason why he keeps coming back is because she loves him to the point where she won't let him go, even in death. Yeah. So she's constantly bringing him back. And then since she was able to meet all these other witches and she's able or and Subaru was able to share like like his his whole story to Akina, maybe she got jealous and that's what caused her to just appear. Which I, I think she she either like took over um Amelia's body. Amelia's body, or, yeah. Or some kind of metamorphosis happened because Amelia is gone now yeah. and now all you have is just a witch. Well so. and like it still looks like her. Like because they keep everyone keeps saying like and then it looks like Satelia, and then like, and then right. Satelia shows up. Like she, she looks like she, she, it resembles Amelia a lot. Like you couldn't see her face, but you saw like the hair, like like the the white silver hair, and like, and right. I think it was the same the same voice as Amelia too. So there's like mm -hmm. definitely some connection. Like whether or not, like maybe she's just presenting her body as a vessel, but like there's definitely a connection between Amelia and Satelia that they're not gonna explain. I don't expect them to explain till like way later. So probably the end of the series because well you watched the ova right with uh puck and puck, Amelia. yeah the origin do they specify anything in that they didn't say anything about to tell you i mean like i, I mean no. like the ova it took place because because you know amelia she was from 100 years ago and something uh -huh. happened because she because she's she's half health she's half elf half human and then something right. in her village happened that called it caused everyone to freeze but then mm -hmm. hundred years later, Amelia is the only one that gets like, um, like thought out. And so in the OVA, she's basically just taking care of all of the people in her village that are still frozen. And so she's like, okay. so she's like, she's the only one. And this is they didn't really show her getting the contract with Puck, but it was like basically showing like how much of a connection he has with Puck. So it's really weird how they say it's like the origin, but like they didn't really say, show where Puck came from. It's just like. It's just, he was still with her in the OVA. Okay. And then, and then, like, she was also near, like, a human village, too. So she was basically hiding her identity because everyone was afraid of her because they think she's Satelia already. Right. And so this all right. is all the stuff that happened before she met Roswell and she went, she went to Roswell's mansion. So, yeah, so nothing, nothing really, they didn't really mention anything about Satelia in the OVA. Yeah. Oh, that's so stupid. It's so much information to process. Yeah. Oh, God. I mean, I still love it. Don't get me wrong. But, man, there is just so much going on. I'm kind of losing track of, like, what's happening. And then I, I'm kind of losing hope into any kind of closure occurring this season. So that's 
my you only. know me i gotta have my closures so <laughs> that's my only like as much as i'm enjoying it like i really am afraid of like having everything being pushed off to like next season and even like i basically i want rem to get like get back all her stuff like by the end of next season because if, if she's still like unconscious by the time this is over like i can't like uh, that's just gonna be negative for me it's just because i felt like it felt like then like it felt like it kind of dragged on for, for just for just for cliffhanger's sake open your eyes rem please like <laughs> like if, well, if, if it ends the season for opening your eyes okay maybe i guess but i, I yeah i really can't see that happening but uh, I mean, with, with what we have to work with, right? Uh, I, I'd imagine there has to be something that's going to close with the next few episodes. Um, so they're, or, they're going towards the mansion now. Or like uh, Subaru. It looks like Garth. I was going to say, or Subaru still doesn't figure out what the hell happened. It's Telia, and then he dies again, and we go through another loop. I don't think that's going to be a thing, just because he's died so many times, and there's only like two or three episodes left. I mean, if, if anything, this would be the time to fix like solve everything well actually and which I'll, i hope they don't do but. well i don't think they can too because because um in one of the scenes like it showed roswell getting like swallowed up by the darkness that satelia was like oozing out and also like he was also i forgot what he said exactly but he basically confirms so he knows about subaru's, subaru's like, powers powers yeah he's so so i mean so i guess it's been confirming what we've like been hinting at heavily but yeah, I'm pretty right. sure, but since he got swallowed up, like, I can't see, like, even if Subaru gets rid of the darkness stuff, like, I can't see everyone going back to normal, so. Mm, I mean, it's possible, because what if he defeats her or gets her to go away, and then everything gets reverted back to normal? Right, because we, <sighs> the first it, time we've seen it, the darkness swallowing up people, and then we don't know what happens if that, if that occurs. It would just feel so anticlimactic then. I was just expecting, like, like a fight with Elsa to do but but this is but this is re-zero david there is no such thing as anticlimactic everything here is looking dramatic as fuck dude. i guess i just can't imagine what what super would do i mean yeah i guess i guess i'm just thinking tr the traditional sense of like where you just like fight elsa and either kill her or get her go away again and then you somehow well even then like you still need amelia you need someone to solve the three trials to get rid of the barrier so even if you get rid of right. satelia I guess you have to have Subaru to solve the barrier then, is that if that's how they're in it. But then, but then, like it just makes Amelia look more useless, and that just carries on, where like no one has any trust in her because she she couldn't, like, save the villagers from the barrier. I mean, I don't know. There, there, so there I guess so many possibilities way. at this point. Yeah, it can go either way. Uh, but for sure, this might work out in their favor though, and in their hopes of getting rid of Elsa, just because. If you need someone that's super powerful to get rid of someone, like the fucking witch of mm -hmm. of, of envy is, is the one to go, you know. So, but she uh, she only like, went there because um because Subaru he had memories of like Petra and Frederica, right? So, right. I think it's more of like a danger because like I think like you more you more. But maybe she'll get caught in a crossfire, you know. That's like the, that's like the hope, but then you, it's still like the double edged sword. Like she still might kill like the two other girls. So. Oh yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's it's what this is what the fourth time it's reset itself. So, I know, but it, I feel like there's there's more than enough information for for Subaru to solve everything at this point. Now it's just based on execution. It's just because um, I like how season one it had a lot of like, like they they drop a lot of the lore like like implicitly in the background. So that like there were still a lot of questions, but it was still interesting to see what was going on, like that. Like that, it foreshadowed a lot in this season, but now it just feels like it's coming way too much. Like with all the dumps we've been getting, like it mm -hmm. just feels like it could have like been like either paced out more or saved for later. Yeah. I mean, but I, like I said, it, it's still. I feel like it's still going at okay pace. I'm just hitting. All the cliffhangers that are yeah. just popping it's, up. It's, it's right. a cliffhanger fatigue, and like I'm hope that the 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 risk of doing all this is you have to have a good conclusion to make it all worth. So right, but I guess it's it's re zero, so I should have more faith. So we'll see. Yeah, they haven't disappointed yet, so I'm sure they can pull it off. 
I'm just dying to know how they plan to do it. <laughs> so that's that's my problem at this point. Yeah. You know, the only other and thing, maybe bring uh, more Kitna too. So. Yeah. Oh no, the only other thing I was gonna say is like super. They I don't think I don't think they said like what was his price for remembering all the stuff in like the no, tea it was uh she took the memories or affection of the of, of the um the arm banana that she got from Petra when she was leaving. Was that all? Was that it? okay? Yeah, because apparently she was like, "Yeah, don't underestimate like the affection that someone has for you." Okay. Or, or some I, random. I kind of remember that, but I again, I was like thinking like this gotta be something more like. Usually in anime, it's always like a heavy price to pay, but maybe maybe this time like it's just I maybe mean, just a kid now. I was just being, it's more like. Mm-hmm. She the was... only thing I could think of is maybe she, kind of sealed Petra's fate like she's gonna die for sure now, and there's nothing Super can do about oh. it. That's like the only. I was gonna say maybe like. Maybe it was just like okay, not actually being nice, and like she's just like reverting this whole like, because like we still think of the witches as bad or as like someone like as mistrustful. So maybe right. it's just like or, it's just it's just like yeah. subverting our expectations and just having actually them be like just just you know regular like nice people. So yeah, you still have to be aware of them, but as of right now, we can kind of see that it's like there's two good ones possibly, there's two bad ones possibly, and then there's a neutral one, right? Uh, so I see Echidna and um, the Minerva, Minerva as like yeah. good ones, and then I see Gluttony and uh, uh, was that Envy, whoever, whatever her name is. Uh, pride, you mean? Or no, no. Uh, so the the Witch of Gluttony and Witch of Envy, I see them as like the the bad ones, as the bad witches. And then I see uh, what was it uh, Pride as like a like an in between. I mean, Gluttony's more like I see more of her as like just not bad, just like just more neutral because like she didn't think about the consequences of her actions, or mm. she's she was saying like how like you need... well, I'm I'm just saying in in comparison to yeah. like say to Subaru, right? I like guess. in a sense, yeah, right. Otherwise, if you really think about it, everyone's neutral; <laughs> they're just doing what they think is best for them. But uh, Subaru is the main character, so yeah. we kind of have to play around him. But uh, yeah, I don't know. There's there's still so many things that can happen because when when Subaru got kicked out, uh, she did say that if I were to meet you again for the third time, there's something that I want to tell you. Oh yeah. So that 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 could be something in its of itself, uh, but we don't know yet. So, so. that's why I, I imagine that, like I can't see them like if they don't like doing something about Satelia and Subaru dies again, then he probably well actually I I, I I assume he's going back to the, like the that dimension, but she keeps. It kind of keeps saying that the price to enter it gets heavier each time, and I think it's like him just going mm-hmm. crazier each time. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah, I'd see that. Because I mean, the first time I guess like I don't know what really triggered it, but the second time he just like kept going crazy from the more the the resets. So mm. I don't know. I, I don't know if you have to go through even more crazy stuff to get to that third time. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I I think the only thing I could think of would be is. As if, um, like, he were to lose everything, right? So, like, he would be transported back to the world where there's those giant rabbits, and then the rabbits like just like destroys everything around him, and he sees it happening live. That I think that's the only way for him to kind of just lose it and cause him to trigger his like sanity to go to just break, and for him to get transported to the other world. Otherwise, I can't think of any other way for him to break down at this point. Yeah. So. We shall see. Yeah. I'm just going to assume next episode is going to be another cliffhanger. So. No, they. I feel like they can. With only two or three episodes left, there's no way. You got to start closing shit now. Or. Because I think I mentioned that last week, but this, half, is, this is like the last cliffhanger. episode. <laughs> yeah, this is like the last episode where, where they can possibly give you more shit to deal with. But they got to start closing shit up now. Or, Otherwise, like, part two is going to be a, like a shit show. Or, yeah, and a part one cliffhanger. Then anyway, another season, part two. You know, I also mentioned that like jokingly, but I hope that that's, that's not the case. So, <laughs> all right. So uh, that's yeah, Cubby. We'll that's our cliffhanger hanging for free zero. We're having one next to Snafu. And... Uh, so I don't have many notes to to this one actually. I feel like not much happened, so I don't really remember much. Are you, you happy, Fred? Are you happy? Honestly, it, was, it was a really good episode, but it's you still just know it's just blue balling. You know what's gonna happen. 
Uh, they made it, they made it nah, I'm pretty sure. They made it fairly clear that last episode that or the last disappointing episode. I believe it was the last one, wasn't it? Or was it the that one was before disappointing. that? Disappointing. No, not the, no, I like this one. I'm talking about the previous episode. Or was it the one yeah. before that? Yeah, well, it was the previous one I was disappointed. It was one that we just knew that when we got like basically when it happened, we're like, oh, oh god, it's gonna happen exactly okay. like this. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be anything special, it's not gonna be anything, it's just gonna be basically something just the only basic thing, original. I remember this episode was just the cooking, just like I was gonna say, mm-hmm. man, like how do I go from cake to fruit tart? That's so basic. Uh, I don't know, man. I think a fruit tart is actually pretty but, uh, well, difficult. I mean, but then again, th- th- this is Japan where they don't have ovens, so I guess you don't have much of a choice. But still, I think you need a fruit tart. Um, I mean, I would be fine with that. Yeah, I would too. But no, I mean, I thought the episode was good. It's uh, it's like still, like, I really like the dynamic with uh, like Hachiman with any of them, with any like the main kind of like interests. I think he'll he can just make it work perfectly. I thought it was pretty like, funny just... when Iroha said, "Hey, I'm not a translator between the two of you." <laughs> <laughs> the, well, it was like uh, I don't remember like the the previous stuff with like Yui's mom, and then uh, immediately when she's like saying, "Oh, you can always add some special ingredient," I'm thinking, "Oh God, this is some reserve shit." Jeez. Oh, uh, uh, but then, but then, then Hachiman's, you know, his response was good too, and then Yui's, Yui's reaction was nice as well. Um, and also, I, I, I always laugh every time too when when Hachiman takes the point of basically being like a house husband, where or when there's like some sort of conversation where this guy's like he just gets the mindset it's like, oh yes, like I'm like this, 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 and then Yui's just like you, you have the mindset of like a housewife, so like, and then I'm just like, yes, that is Hachiman. <laughs> like you seem to have forgotten my true yeah. goal. Yep. Mentally, mentally, he's he's, uh, he's he's wanting to live the dream, man. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Something about this week's show is having like the, the bombs appear that just takes the cake. <laughs> man, maybe I have a problem, dude. <laughs> this is <laughs> no, no, who's, it's who's okay. at that, he's at that milk stage. Yeah, we're at that age. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's normal. It's it's normal. Yeah. Um, no, it's uh, I mean, it was like the first episode too. Like when it ended. It wasn't like I didn't actually have to feel bad for anybody. It's it's more it was actually kind of ended at like just a, what, a nicer. I, note. I forgot how this episode ended. Anyways, like I just I, um besides like the cook that he gave like yeah the extra give Yui cake, stuff cake yeah. to Yui for in re, in return for Valentine's Day or not Valentine's it's, Day or was it because uh um because Hachiman was because I think Yui was asking basically what like what's Hachiman's witch oh, wish. Yeah, wish. Um, and then, uh, Hachiman was basically talking about how, like, you know, he wished, like, this could kind of just go on forever, you know, just, like, him, you know, basically, like, uh, um, granting, like, you know, each one of Yui's wishes. Did wishes. Yui, didn't Yui say, too, she wanted to grant Yukino's wish at the end or something? Like, yeah. So. Yeah, basically, it's because, yeah. like, Yui's just wanting to be, she wants, like, everything to be, she wants Hachiman, but she also wants, like, the whole kind of, like, you know, group together when it's knowing, like, that's not possible. And it was also kind of weird, too, where... Oh, I completely forgot about that. That like that girl that was that was giving like that that's that that speech at the end. Oh, that and Hashiman's just bawling. And uh, then the ha- student council president, <laughs> the student, yeah. the actual student council president, because yeah, because ha- your house is just like the <laughs> upcoming. So yeah, and then Hachiman's just basically just bawling. So it's like, Why was like, he crying so like, much? Was he like I don't I didn't get that. Yeah. Like, apparently, well, everybody loves her. her. All right, everybody yeah. loves her. Everybody loves her. And then he's basically like, who doesn't? And then he just looks over to Iroha, and of course, Iroha has beef with everybody. <laughs> so, She's fake as fuck. I know. And Hachiman's like, man, this is why nobody likes you. Yeah. This has already been established by those other two guys. You all right? How do you feel about that, Shred? Hachiman is uh, trashing on your girl. Dude, I, dude, it was still hilarious. Like, I mean, I thought it was still awesome. Um, it was also it was a little different, too, for that. Uh, I completely don't remember the blonde girl's name. Where it first seemed like that was definitely like they were like oh, they were like it yeah. seemed like almost more like just, before she, like way she, early on she's just the bitch like, to me as always yeah. Yeah. Well, she's gotten better though that's the thing because like before mm-hmm. I remember like way back in the show where it seemed like that group of friends were was just fake as all hell yeah. but now it's more of like she's actually like caring for Yui I don't know about the other girls or guys in that group but at least she has like some sort where basically she's even like like you know Hachiman why are you doing this why are you right. basically just bringing these people along I'm thinking like I'm thinking dude. Maybe there's a chance, but it's just more of like just realizing now there's there's yeah there's really no hope. not, but uh, yeah I think I think everyone is just slowly like growing up and maturing so yeah. I think that's normal and like you mentioned like before they're all pretty fake but after Hachiman like just like swept in and like swap everyone out three feet I think everyone's kind of connected <laughs> better or just been more realistic yeah right like you got them spreading f- false rumors so they can all jo- go as a group with uh, Hayato for career day. 
um, you got that relationship where Hashimoto was like, I want to be your girlfriend or I want to be your boyfriend. And then she denied him in front of uh, that one guy who had a crush on her. Oh, yeah. So like he basically like yeah, sabotaged yeah. their whole relationship. So yeah. I think that's why they're somewhat in depth to him. So they don't treat him like as as, as bad as they did before. So I, like Hashimoto's, yeah, like he's helping out others. He's not just basically keeping everything. He's just not keeping it himself. Right. It was also funny at the beginning of the episode as well when uh, he texts Yui if he, you know if she's doing anything. She looks looks at her phone like what the fuck. <laughs> just looks over at Hachiman and just walks over there, and then it's just like you know what? you could just ask me normally. You don't have to just text me. And like that, that whole I don't know. I, I missed the comedy of the show. Why does it have to? Like, why do I have to throw the drama elements in? Because they're in this oh, final season. I know. I know. Fuck you. We're, we're adults now. We can't be like that forever. <laughs> that's that's why you and you we need to grow up. That's why Kuro yeah. goes for milfs. Hey, hey, hey. Go. It's not my fault, all right? It's not no, my no, fault. It's, no, it's perfectly natural. You're at that age, man. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. Like the whole like this this episode was I mean with all just about Yui and Yui's mom and it was it was it was just it was funny. Yeah, it, it was, was good. It's like this is I mean this is how things could be. But it's like even her it's like even like her mom knows it's basically everybody knows that like this isn't going to happen almost. And it's just more of like just kind of like I guess delaying the inevitable, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's kind of the whole premise of, of this episode, right? Like yeah. how everyone wishes this like can happen every day for the rest of their lives, but like, can't... we all know it's going to come to an end eventually. So yeah, so I don't know if, if that's like what they're trying to do, uh, or if they're just trying to like. I keep thinking like, like why are they dragging this along? Are they going to do something different? But it, it more of so like in the previous episode, where I think I mean where I, I mean I was disappointed in the previous episode. I don't know about Yuku. I think David, you were okay with it. <laughs> No, no, yeah. I, I, was, I was the one that was deeply disappointed with it. Okay, I would right, say okay, I was disappointed okay. just because, like, yeah, I, I did not like how it ended with the prom. How, how the the solution to the prom problem was so easy. Yeah, stuff was really weird. But anyway, I mean, it was this was just kind of a one of those one of those episodes that what could be or what could have been, but it's not going to be. I mean, be. like my only criticism fans is just, for the UE fans. My only criticism <laughs> is just that like like that nothing plot relevant really happened. So like. I wish it was more. I you know it's, it's a nice yeah. break from all the drama still, but I was just yeah, expecting well, we, more. We still have three episodes left, I think. I think it's. I think we still have three more for the show, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, um, so. Yeah, but it's. Uh, I don't. Well, they, well, the only plot thing there was there's really nothing that Hachiman could have done because like they like, uh, Yukino and Iroha. Well, Yukino said like there's really no need for him to help. Like the parts that like that needs to be done. Yeah, I know. I just. I'm just thinking, like, oh. in context of the season, like, of all that's happened yeah. so far, it's like... Yeah. It's okay. I can give him an excuse for a Yui episode. That's fine. <laughs> it's just, she's, honestly, she's right up there with my favorite. I, I can't I can't really tell if it's going to be Yui or, or, or Iroha. Oh. But we'll see. Or maybe I'll just get figures of both of them. We'll see. And they can go right in my, my main shelf. Oh, boy. I mean... Need help there. In comparison <laughs> to, like, the whole the whole show, though, it's like... I just feel like Yui was, just wasn't there for, like, the first two seasons, so... I I don't know. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, she's still like a. I mean, she's in the core group. She's been like right. here and there. Core group, but it's like the f- definitely the first season was like the Yukino focus, and even I'd say even the second season was still like Yukino focus. So uh, I think second season was more of both of them because the, because both of them were basically trying to like like help Hachiman in a sense. Like it was like season two was Hachiman and uh, basically him growing, and then it was both of them like trying to help him along. Yeruha fucking everything up. That's fine. Well, actually, uh, actually, yeah, I didn't really care much for your hot till the OVA, and then, then she's just awesome. Yeah, because she fucked yeah, everything I mean, up. You know, people keep hating on her. She, she's only first year, guys. She'll, she'll get better. Yeah, she'll have plenty of time that we won't see. Oh, maybe OVAs, right? OVA three. <laughs> That'll be out. Awesome. Yeah, we'll see. OVA of the third third year, but I got nothing else. Yeah, I don't have much. I don't remember anything, so I have nothing much to say. When it gets closer to the end of the season, though, I'm sure we'll have a bunch of stuff to talk about. And Pretty sure that, uh, and that final condolence thing and the final episode it's gonna be a big one. Yeah, everything is gonna rest on that final episode because either I'm gonna flip out or I'm gonna be just full of joy of, of how I ended. You guys are gonna so, talk about the ledge. <laughs> yeah, so we'll we'll see. We'll see. All right, so that's gonna be it for Snafu, and then we're next to Sword Art, Ku's favorite. <laughs> Oh my god, this episode was just <laughs> full of bullshit. <laughs> and like and like we, we called it, right? This it's is our basically our they're weekly... gonna they're gonna live out their lives. 
in, in, Man, in fucking Underworld. Coots, so. he just jumped off that hype chain, and now we're back in our full on shit on Sword Art mode. Dude, Coot, this episode, we're not getting that special episode. <laughs> we're, we're, not. we're not getting any more. No, no, we are. This we are. Just, we are because uh, for some, like, because, like, dude, like, this whole episode is just. <laughs> So fucking like, dude. Okay, so <laughs> complex. Thing, it was so complex. I, I, the one I thing I'll believe. say is that like I don't understand how like what's the point? What what's the thing of like killing the people in the machines? Like where like where I understand Poe was like he stuck as a tree or whatever. But like, but even the captain, like Gabriel, or whatever. Like, so I guess when you get killed, like how does that like make him like all like dead and all that? I don't understand. So that, <laughs> that part, I actually went to Reddit. Okay, and. <laughs> What they say? And, well, uh, apparently Kirito uh, di- was able to hit or do some sort of ability so hard. Some, that some hacking. Some hacking. Yeah, basically, his ability was able to do so much damage to him that it basically destroyed his fuck light. So, okay. and, oh shit! And like, okay. it, so your fuck light's connected to your actual like life force or whatever. Like, only with Kirito, it sounds like. I don't mean that 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 makes that makes sense in a sense, right? You're you're basically just overloaded because if I remember correctly, his attack was like the spirit bomb where it was just full of everyone's spirits. So, like, and then they had to like kill him by overloading this guy with everyone's thoughts. And I guess that's what like caused him to just like I, I guess because, sure, because sure, like man. the whole there the sort like the allization world, like when you dive in, it's I guess it's like connected to your consciousness. So I can see it's right. like connected to your brain. Somehow, but like his body was full on like rigus rigamorphous. So yeah, like, so basically, Kirito hit him so hard in his uh, like it causes his whole body to age and grow cold. No, not age. Oh, no, age. Basically, oh. just destroyed his fuck right? like his spirit. Yeah, but like, his, 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 his like his face was like all shriveled up, and like it, it looked like he was. Like, oh, no. That was Poe. Poe was all shriveled up. No, 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 no. That that was him. That Captain was the was, uh, like, yeah, Captain Gabriel. was shriveled up too. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. His, his his face just looked. Frozen and basically like, horrified. No, no, but then oh, if you if you look God. at it, he, like his his hands was like he was like, yeah, like, sh- like sh- gripping. Like, yeah, like, he was gripping super hard. So he was yeah. like stressing out, or he was he was freaking out for sure. And it, it looked like he died of like a heart attack or something of that yeah. nature, where he was just like completely spazzed out. And okay. then Poe, he just had this aged look on him, so he looked like he died of old age. And somehow he's missing now. Yeah. So. so- I guess that's the secret boss that I was asking for. I guess I don't. Yeah. Know. So laughing. Co- basically, I laughing knew coffee. this fucker was still gonna be. I knew he was gonna be still alive, or he's gonna something's gonna happen. I was, I was like, th- like this guy makes too much big of a deal of laughing coffin when they fucking mean nothing the anymore. Author, thank you so. No, we, we yeah. called it too. We yeah. called it. Yeah. It's just so stupid. Like no, this no, shit. Friend. This shouldn't be a thing. No, Sren, no. the author. He thinks he's so smart. He oh. keeps doing all these callbacks to, to laughing, laughing coffin. It's, got it's us. foreshadowing, he got man. Him. He's so smart. Yeah, but, like, I I, but then uh, I, I think it'll be fine though because if if you think about it, like the the time frame of what they showed us in the beginning and towards the end, like it, it doesn't match up, right? So for them, it was what is it like twenty minutes is equal to two hundred years in, in in the other world. So oh, right. for that two hundred years to have passed, I want to say that you know I'm sure that. Kirito and Asuna had kids or whatever, and then their descendants is what was able to chop down a tree within 200 years, and that's what caused Paul to wake up, and now he's out seeking for revenge, but something already happened, so I think they're fine. Like, this just... The the whole storyline at this yeah, point is just so fucking it's cool. convoluted. The, 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 I, oh, the real God. question is, do you care? Yes! Yes, I care! Okay. Alright? <laughs> because it doesn't make sense, man! Like, like ser- you had fucking, uh, like, um... Akihiko or whatever the uh, like Heathcliff yeah. guy, the Heathcliff, scientist. Yeah. That was he, apparently, he was the guy that <laughs> He's in all a robot the robot body, <laughs> and he was, he, was, he was in a robot body all the time, and he woke up at just this moment to fucking oh, get rid of the, don't forget, the, the bomb. He had, he had the miracle to put on the backup right. the backup battery system after being disconnected from everything. Yeah, yeah, he was able to power back up to full power. And it's like because <sighs> of, of the Beatles. Like this whole episode got me feeling all sorts of ways, like on different spectrums. Just because, like in the, very, so in the very beginning, when Gabriel woke up, I was like, "Oh shit, he's still alive!" And then when you realize that he was dead, and like Dude, how the whole, they killed him, that whole sequence, I thought that was pretty that, satisfying. Okay, that sequence, that's full on like Japanese horror. Like, like that's right. like not. But like, I enjoyed it. That's like what whatever like <laughs> like sci-fi technology BS the author is saying. Like that was straight on like. Whenever you see like hands coming out from the ground and pulling people, that's that's Japanese horror right there. 
Right. I and then, guess, and then but... was, I don't know. That's kind of fucked up when I when I laugh when I saw Alicia and she's and the blood coming out of her ear because of the, the screwdriver. <laughs> screw that was, that was, I was laughing. That was so and, satisfying, was bro. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, you 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 fucking deserve this, you bitch. I was like, oh yeah, like, the screwdriver so incident. Yeah, like, yeah. When first, like when that whole like that whole scene was going on, I thought like, oh damn, is this the first time in a long time Sword Art's not gonna have their own war that's like outside of the game? Right. And then so then they basically he died and they basically showed everybody else. So I thought like, oh damn, okay, maybe they're just gonna end it right here. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, we had a third body that somehow they missed. And then it's uh, and I'm like, oh, fantastic. So the war is still gonna continue, <laughs> except this guy's gonna look like a shriveled fuck. So we'll see. Yeah. You know. And the whole thing with basically like the like that uh, robot thing with the d- dumbest thing in the world. And then of course that where he could barely move, everything was breaking off, and then it just disappears. Just shumpo's out of there. I also thought it was I also um, yeah. thought it was uh pretty funny too how like um because you had uh one of the guys when they're in the ladder section, you had like the um the, the main guy carrying like he's face he was, it was like it was like was it a pistol versus like the full on Ahmed rifle, and of course he he only got one 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 hit on his on his on him, but then like he somehow hit the other guy straight on, even though they're both wearing wearing like bulletproof vests. No 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 no. See, it's easy to get a headshot when you're shooting them from above. Oh sir. okay, yes. He wasn't wearing a, <laughs> that, that. He wasn't wearing a that, helmet. That pistol accuracy <laughs> versus yeah, versus, versus an Ahmed Ahmed rifle. Hey, pistols are pretty accurate if it's a small, like small area, right? I guess. I mean, he didn't hit the other guy; he only hit one guy, so it's fine. Yeah, it was uh, still, dude. But yeah, I'll just call it bullshit. This whole episode, I yeah. don't know what to think of anymore. But uh, if anything, this this leads me to believe that what the next or the final arc that they're going to show, it has to be something with the underworld. Like, I can't imagine them making it out of this. Like totally unscathed. Oh, that's right. Really well. That's what you <laughs> think. Well. No, but blow your mind, then, sir. No, but it's been at least two hundred years that's passed since they were stuck down there. So something okay. has power, to have happened. Power of love that will keep them alive. It's yeah. going to reverse the flow of time and like. Yeah. Well, apparently the IT guy has another idea, so we'll find out what happens. No, no, that was that uh, was like that was blowing up the the like the facility. That was his idea. No, 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 no. The, the, the scientist. Guy. Not yeah, the bad idea. Did he? Yeah. Okay, I, I thought I, yeah. I didn't. I don't remember that at all. So they went back down to the thing and they got in that gun war because he had to do stuff on his laptop again. Right. And he, and he just had to hit more buttons. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know save Kirito, so we'll see. I mean, because at the same time, cool. Remember that other guy was well, actually, it was a tree. Um, so he could easily have survived like the time. But at the same, at the same though, like his body just looked. I don't know why it looked so shriveled up and as it was. I'm guessing uh, once he once he came back, he. Oh, I guess I, I don't know. Like maybe he came back already when. I don't know what to for you. Yeah, like, like I don't know what the hell to think, right? Like, is it because he turned into a tree that he resembles a tree in real life now? Like I, I don't <laughs> get it. But like there has to be something there that, uh, yeah, there has to be something there. There has to be an explanation. But the fact is, is that the way that they showed up the timelines, it leads you to believe that the next two episodes, it's going to be Asuna and Kirito uh, living out their their lives in the world. We only Unless, have two episodes left. Right. And then the only thing I could think of is the administrator had the ability to preserve her age to live forever. So since Kirito defeated her and kind of obtained her powers, maybe he can do the same thing to both of them. There's gonna be something like that. Something right. easily just kind of just bullshit and they can just right. pull out of their ass. So, I mean, we'll sort, of, sort of logic has its own thing, so I can do whatever it wants. We'll, we'll, we'll right. see. We get one more battle, but since Brian's here and Chad, I'm just gonna give props to him that Bercoli was definitely the most epic thing yeah. that's happened so far. So far. Yep. So, so far. So far. Still two episodes. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say this prematurely, <laughs> but I'm gonna give props to Brian for predicting that Bercoli was yeah. the best thing. I guess there's still somebody that's holding. That's holding truth, or like holding, like basically, like think, like I guess faith or hope in the show, but I don't think it's I'm gonna like, happen. I'm gonna just call it for Brian right now for Bacali. Yeah, I, same. I don't know what else you can do. I mean, really, the only thing left that can happen is like a fight with Poe. What the fuck's he gonna do? Like, he's he's got nothing. He's just gonna walk up to him and try to stab him with like another one of those poison condoms. Is that his plan? <laughs> in his like, dying state. Maybe or, it's gonna be maybe it's gonna be an epic fight between him and a robot. <laughs> It could be that. <laughs> it could be, it could be either like him, like you know, like uh, running into them, or basically it's going to be one of those where he's just going to, they're going to run into him later on at some point, and he had to strap up into one of those machines because his body couldn't function, so he can only like sabotage them from within the game or something. I can easily see that. 
But I don't want to talk about this anymore. We will find out what happens next episode. <laughs> I mean, this episode was full of enraging yeah, moments. So. I think we get all of it. And it's like, at yeah. this, this point, like, I don't you, know what you, to even say. You raged too, episode. but I laugh at this all this pity. I was laughing. I was laughing. I was my laughing ass at all the dumb shit that no, was no, happening. No, this, this is me, right? I was like, I was entertained and I was amazed at like, how satisfying the, the end of Gabriel was, right? And then you come down to the bullshit of like whatever happened. And then if you stayed until the end scenes, uh, there was a scene where like Kirito and Asuna is going to fly off into their world, and they cut it off at that. So it leaves you with some kind of hope that you know this is going to lead to a, a like a, a new refreshing start for them. Because like I mentioned earlier, I actually like the beginning of Underworld right of this arc just because it it showed promise. Oh, yeah. I actually hated it when they actually showcased it, showcased the real world about what was going on behind the scenes. I was like, you know, I don't give a fuck. Just take me back to the world, and I want to see like Yu-Gi-Oh and uh, Kirito's uh, progress as they become knights or whatever. And this, they just ruined that. So this, this author man, he keeps killing off so many good characters that he, he actually builds up. They actually have like depth, right? Like, I haven't got time for that often. And then it moves on with just like his basic his basic crew, but yeah. uh. So, I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Really the only thing I'm guessing is next episode will probably be Kirito Asuna. And then the last episode will basically be, you know, like everybody's woke, you know, everybody's woken up. Everybody, and they're trying to just get out of the turtle. And then they might run into Poe or they're going to have like tease it at the end of it. Basically, Poe gets away and he's going to, you know, run off and then fight them another day type of thing. Uh, that's what I'm, that, really, that's the only thing I have, I have to guess right now. I mean, I mean if Poe, if Poe po dies, at some point in these last couple episodes, I will give props to this the, <laughs> the writer just to basically just fucking finish laughing coffin. They don't mean anything. They're absolutely useless. Nobody gives a shit. It's just move on. That's all I got. Yeah. yeah I, the only thing I I'll know. say is like I agree. I agree with Kutu. That like I don't like when they went to the real world stuff because it just like it really took away from the immersion of what they were trying to set up with Alzization. And so. So yeah, that's just gonna be it for I Sword do, Art. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then remember we went next to Shokugeki. This is my again, still my background anime. So, oh, yeah, oh boy, they, I guess they, you're gonna love this one. They, they, but they, this they, one wasn't this one wasn't too bad. They went, they went, you, they went crazy with the uh, cross knives again. It wasn't too bad. Oh, I mean, they showcased. I'll just say, they, I'll say, they showcased. Uh, I'll say this, like, they, dude, like. <laughs> You really want? You have to fucking combine all five of like the the grand cuisines, or dude, you should. That's like that sounds like the worst like fusion food ever. Gross. Like, sounds absolutely disgusting. Like, but guys, their specialty is making really gross food, so this is actually in Soma's favor. Like I, like I don't. Know, I barely don't like fusion food as it is. When you have all five, like, why would you want French and Italian mixed with like Chinese and Indian and Turkish, it like? I'm telling you, if this guy wins by ba- by making yakisoba, I'm giving this show a ten out of ten. <laughs> Dude, it, it might happen. It <laughs> might <laughs> literally happen because right? yeah. basically that's more like this. This like the, the, this author is just like fuck this show, and basically just he just throws it just something stupid I mean, again, rushing. He just knows he's saying canceled. Yeah, yeah. He got them going to the quarterfinals, semifinals, and then now they're on to the last match of the semifinals, and then after that, it's going to be the finals. And they had a throwback to a, a feel good, like a feels good moment with like Soma's mom, and yeah, it's it's going to be, part. yeah, it, it's like it was somewhat satisfying because now you get to see like the whole family, and then at the end scene, it shows like everyone's faces in the portraits rather than being like whited out. So, um, it's, one, it's not too bad. The one bad thing that I actually really thought because this this entire time we had no idea how Soma got his scar. And it was just like one of the most basic things in the world. Like it was not like it was nothing that was like mind blowing. It was just like a basic thing. He's just running around. It's yeah. his hits his, his eye like you know, a, basically a little kid. Just being a dumbass kid. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't even normal. notice he had a scar. Like that never. Are you kidding? I never <laughs> noticed this this whole time. Yeah, I, I didn't pay attention. Oh my god. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> we'll move on from that, so, David. Uh, that that part was not important to me because I didn't I didn't even know he had a scar. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. But it shows you that even if you're the worst cook in the sh- in the show, you're you'll be fine as long as you have the power of love to, to bring you through it. So, dude, I like how this show like every time like the noir like the the main leader I already forgot his name, but they like in a sense that like they show all these other noir people, they hype them up, and they get like one panel and they move on. Like it's just like what was the point of even giving them like time to just like show their face? They like, they don't even get a name. We don't even I don't even think we get to see what they made. I think they basically just got hit with like an ice blast and they moved on. 
and yeah, it was because again like for speed running through this tournament yeah it's like it's, so, it's it's worse though it's like getting even worse so again it's yeah. like it's just <laughs> makes this whole thing like it should have been like a 1v1 or just like a like or it really some, some, best, really. a one or like a team v te- a team v team style with just noir and totsky yeah because all the other people are just totally irrelevant yeah, the, the feels moment though, like with his mom though, I think that was kind of like out of nowhere. That I actually thought that was that was pretty good. That could have been like like di- you know like kind of dove in more. Like I really wish they would have actually like um, gave an episode for at least like his backstory with his mom instead of just giving like a couple minutes because mm-hmm. it would have been a lot more impactful. And because it's like at the same time, it seemed like his mom had a lot more impact on them than like what we see or what we were, what we were able to see because she yeah. just got a few panels, she got a haircut, and then she died, and then. That was about it, and then when I really thought that we're, that could have been done, I mean, I think so much better. I mean, it was it, it definitely gave us like the message where uh, his dad was able to get out of his root because of Soma, because uh-huh. basically Soma was just like, "I'm gonna cook, I'm gonna like basically, I'm gonna," and he just got like the mindset he just wanted to get in it, which kind of like seemed like revived him and or it revived his dad in a sense. Mm-hmm. But it's I also, felt like it been... it's also where he got his experimentations from too, from his mom. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah his mom, his mom was the one who basically. Right. Who had just absolutely gross stuff. See, that's gonna be my excuse. Like, if I try to cook, I'm gonna be like, "Oh, I tried to do that. I just try to make the most disgusting things in the world. It just happens to be every single time." Taylor would kill you regardless, but uh... she'll never know. Even though she, I think she's in the stream. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I sold my. I already, I already sold my plan. But yeah, it, it just gives you the feeling that you know he's going back to his roots. He's remembering why he started cooking or why he's as good as he is. Right? It's because of his mom passing away and children yeah. taught him everything. And that's going to be the push to make him like cook the best food that he's ever cooked before, I guess. So, power so, of love. So, if you're saying uh, we're gonna have spicy ramen with Indian curry and some. Yeah, pasta. we're gonna have the best some, yakisoba some, you've some, ever some, had, some sir. Spaghetti sauce. Hey man, and some French 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 cheese in there. And ten whatever, out of ten. Whatever Turkish bread. Is. No, what if what if he makes like some kind of like curry uh, yakisoba spaghetti dish? <laughs> Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, no, it sounds awful, right? But 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 hear me out. They're known I mean, for making awful they dishes. Made, yeah, they make so, worse stuff in the show. So right. So I'm guessing that this is a possibility. Like it, that's the only thing I can think of, right? Like if you have someone who has a god tongue and they're so sick of all these like godly dishes or like perfect dishes, what you need is like the complete opposite to kind of like throw you back in gear, which would be something that's completely disgusting but somewhat edible at the same time. So. Like the the show is pretty much writing it to perfectly fit like Soma's niche, right? Of making awful food. So I feel like that's where they're going with at this point. It's not gonna be something amazing, it's gonna be something horrible, but still edible, and that's gonna cause them to win. Dude, I hate this noir. Like this this main noir guy is just is just like one of the worst villains ever. <laughs> it's just I don't know, like nothing there's nothing really hype with him. One, it's just cause we like know nothing about this guy. We know a little bit. But mm-hmm. then like he wasn't really focused on for much like like uh, Aaron is dad. I think he had like what two seasons? Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, was it the, this thing where he, he like he goes into the tournament with Soma saying where he's just gonna make this huge thing like I'm gonna beat you with your dad's knife, and this guy uses like every single fucking knife this guy has. I like how they try to break the fourth wall by having him become this protagonist in his mind, where oh, yeah. like every oh, yeah. every weapon that he has, they're rooting for him, and then like the the the, the Polish star dormitory was like, "What the fuck? Who do you think you are? Like, get yeah. the shit out of here! Like, how do you even see him think of this shit when he's cooking?" I, I like also when they go to the the other noir group, and they're like, "Yeah, he basically forced them to duels. He stole them." <laughs> yeah, you know. And I thought like, okay, all I right, thought that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That part. But I, but I, cause like when he was first like doing those like stories in his head, I was like, "Damn!" I was like, "Did it really go like this?" Right. But at the same time, it almost meant meaningless. And then they were like the exact. I was exactly thinking they said it. They said it all of it. I was like, "Okay, yeah, that makes sense." <laughs> thank, thank God, right? Which is fine. Yeah, which is fine. I didn't know if they were actually trying to force us to feel for this guy. When yeah. really, I have no feeling for him. Yeah, basically, everyone there like just like explain our feelings as an audience. Like, who are you? But yeah, I wonder. I wonder if that's what gives him his power, right? His ability to be so deep in his delusions <laughs> that it's like Arthur, right? Like he's so strong because of how delusional he is. Damn. Or Jin, where he has like his own little stories in his mind. Right. You know. So maybe that's what. <laughs> maybe that's the true power behind his, like, true reasoning behind his power. Who knows? God. But last thing I got though before uh, I'm really got nothing more to say, say about the show, um, was where he busts out uh, the previous number one seed. I forgot his name. 
he basically uh, Sukasa or something. He, Sukasa, he, he basically, yeah, he busts out like his his grater to grate butter, and I thought like I don't know how this is really gonna like you know make it better, but you do you. How I I just thought that was you know interesting and dumb at the same time. I mean I don't know for some reason. I can think of they'll, they'll come up with a reason as to why he did it. Like, oh, it's melting at the perfect no, they won't. temperature because it's degrading <laughs> perfectly. I, I don't know. I think that one little panel they gave us is that all the information we're gonna get. I think they're gonna move on pretty quick from it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're gonna like wrap this up in the next episode. And then the final episode is gonna be him versus it's gonna be like a Soma versus Arena, and then they're gonna like have a feels good moment, and that's the end of the series. Yeah, that's and Soma's uh, gonna uh, confess his love to Arena, and that's how he's able to beat Arena. And... Okay. No, I don't. I don't think he's gonna do that. They like... flagged that. They flagged that early on in the season, though, when they said like, or in the, they went to the flashback with his dad. He's like, oh, to like make your cooking like the best it is. Like you have to have like feeling of it with like from that one special person. Where it's like, well, Ariana flag up. Oh. No, I don't think it's Megumi. If it's Megumi, that would that would be awesome. Ten out of ten. No, like, no, I, 10 I think 10 moment. I, I think they they've they've turned away at that. The showcase of his mom. I think it's I think his so. mom is going to be the reason why he he powers up. Or he levels up in this case. I can see that too, actually. Okay, I'll, I'll give it another point if that if that's the case. Right. But I think it's gonna be Arena. It's gonna right. be Arena. Because if they did that, it would be out of character for Soma, right? Like there is no way in hell that he's gonna like confess his love to Arena and then be like, "Oh, you're gonna be the reason why." Like I'm I'm a lot stronger. My cooking's a lot better now. Well, this is the first season where we actually got to see kind of some flashes where he, there, there's like some sort of feeling. There's some sort of feels there. But you know, if we weren't speed running this season, there might be more of that. Right. I mean, yeah, I guess that's the case too. So this season is really hard to like really kind of tell any of that because like we're not getting any like the depth of anything. It's just like the right. face, like just like, just like the basically the first page, and then we're moving on to the next chapter, and then mm-hmm. it's that's about it. But so I, the only thing I'll say is that um, uh, because I know it's like Shrine, you keep complaining about like, like the like like you know Asahi, but like. I feel like this author in general, I don't even think he does like villains that well because you compare like like Asahi and you compare like like Irina's dad. I feel like he's much better doing rivalries. Like when you were just having like like the cooks, like they challenge each other, but they still respect each other. Oh, like, right. That's yeah. like like when um like when Soma in the first two seasons when he was up against like Alice and the other guy and he was up against like the Spice guy too. There was like a rivalry going with them, but it was more like it was more friendly competition. And so, like, I like it when it's like that more than the stupid, like, a- actual villain stuff. It doesn't work well. And at e- all. Even, even like the elite, yeah. the first elite ten, like, it was still a like a friendly rivalry, where like I someone mean, was trying to get better to <clears throat> challenge them. So, I mean, honestly, even the stuff with Aaron his dad, I think it was pretty good. I mean, it, it makes sense to basically where it's like if he like, like he doesn't see like the like you know like her dad doesn't see like the point of putting in work for food when really you could just. You could just you know uh, follow the best stuff there is and just basically just go with that, mm. like that sort of that instead of being like kind of like you know because he just saw like you know uh, Soma's dad working like so hard basically putting all like effort and everything into his cooking. He's just like what the hell's the point when you can just like follow like instructions to just make the like the greatest stuff in the world. Mm. Like I mean I can even see that part, but then they just went off the deeper. They just went off like the, they just went off the rails. At, you know towards the end of it though, when you're giving this fucker power. By by like was it by like not even blood but by just because he was married. I'm married. And then, yeah, and then hence he received <laughs> like the blessing. And then I thought like, oh boy, okay, we're going uh, we're going the wrong way. I know, but so, but uh, before that though, yeah, yeah, but after that, garbage. So I think that's all we got for Shogeki. And then yeah. we're, we're next to rent a girlfriend, <laughs> the other rant show. Oh my god! Oh boy. This, this fucking episode, dude. Like, <laughs> I feel yeah. so bad for Ruka. Before Ruka's, you say like, anything, Ku, I just want there's a uh, there's a lot of one liners in this episode. So I was actually oh pretty la- I was actually laughing a bunch of points in this episode. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Ku. Oh. Oh, you yeah, dude, there's oh, there's so many things that just makes me want to just rip out the MC's head off <laughs> and just toss it down some stairs. Like you got That's this it? girl. I mean the more, but you know, this is PG thirteen. Uh, podcast. Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, yeah. explicit. Yeah. Right. But yeah, like this guy is maybe it's because I'm biased, right? Because I because I'm not, so far Ruka, Ruka is is my number one girl. So the fact that he's right. doing her dirty so much in this episode, like, just makes me want to just like explode. Like this girl legit took him to a love hotel, 
where she was just throwing herself at him. And he was like, oh, nope, you can't do this shit. You know, pussy out. <laughs> Go in the bathroom. And then she was able to find out about this meeting. Um, and she's like, you know what? I got to make this work. Like, I'm going to show up at the uh, at the New Year's uh, meetup with, with his family. And then she's, uh, like, pouring her hot out to the grandma to try to leave, like, a good impression. So Chizuru doesn't have to be the fake girlfriend anymore. Like, mm-hmm. like here's the real girlfriend, right? You could totally just walk away from this. But it turns out that Chizuru, like, I mean, we knew it already, but she's secretly in love with him, but she's in denial. So she can't do anything. And she, and at the end of the day, I mean, I'm sure it's just due to plot armor, but at the end of the day, she realizes that, you know, like maybe Chizuru and MC had a point, right? They can't just blow it off because the grandma just loves Chizuru too much for her to break this off. So she backs off at the last minute, but she's still like all lovey-dovey over the MC. And it's just heartbreaking to see this happen to a good girl. So like, even though like, I I, I get that like she's clingy, and like to the main, main character, but like I feel like she has a better point. It's like, like yeah, like this is like you two are all fake. Like so, why don't you just the let her point. replace yeah. as the real girlfriend? Like I feel like she has mm-hmm. a better point. But by... dude, this like this like caring for what the grandma thinks is way too much. Yeah. Like it's just like Jesus. Like w- like honestly, like it gets it gets, even, we get to the point where like Go even ahead. with like the the focus on family, it's like yeah, it's like it's still just like I don't even, like. I think it's just the main character, him being insecure. He like the I'm pretty sure the grandma doesn't care who he ends up with. It's just like she just knows at least he's a loser. So like both he needs to be with like, someone. Like both these choices are completely out of his fucking league. And this guy's just like, oh, like she loves this one. Like she really likes this one girl. I'm thinking, like this part is just so fucking stupid. Like I just can't. Like it's every time like, I hear about like the oh the stuff with the grandma, stuff with the grandma. It's just like one who gives a shit. And it's at the same oh, time man. where you know, basically, like Ruka's calling him out on everything. It's it's like it's like where all, it's also like the whole thing where like I, they already went through. That's basically like they don't like each other. Him and Chizuru, yeah. move on. Like fucking move on. You should already be in the mindset like that's not gonna happen. It's her job, and just fucking move on. And if it, this guy's as lonely and basically as pathetic as he is, it's like this chick is like right here, yeah. which is already like, completely out of your league, and I obviously mean, cares. The grandma thing, like I can kind of understand because it's Japan. Like I understand like. I mean, family no. is like even if it's no. like I, I can sort not like totally, but I can sort of understand why he thinks that way. But I think it's more of like he's making an excuse. So, dude, the dude, one moment, it, the one moment it, pissed me off so much. Sorry, cool, was no, when no, he no, basically no. called Ruka a compulsive liar. Oh like, yeah, are you far- fucking <laughs> yeah. kidding no, me? And then the best part about that <laughs> shit is, is like, like his his grandma knows that he's such a fucking loser that she believes him, right? Because she even God. says about explicitly, like, yeah, there's no way Chizuru will let you cheat on her. One and for two, there's no way in hell that you're able to nab two beautiful girls. So like, because he's such a fucking loser, her the grandma and the the parents like falls for this shit. Like I was like, like when he was saying this shit, I was like, there's no way in hell this is gonna work, right? And then like the grandma just like just blurts out those it's lines, a- and I'm like, yeah, I, I I guess like that makes sense, you know. I mean, but that line when he said like he's a she's like pathological liar or whatever yeah i'm like that was like the worst thing because i'm like dude that's fucking you that's been you this dude, whole season and like for real like before that though was, david i thought like when he hypocrite. first like when he first when he first uh he he first like said like oh like she's she's his friend i was like dude that's the worst fucking thing you could say and he follows it up he proves me wrong immediately <laughs> and i'm like i'm like this mother this fool like I, and I, so i have to say my weekly thing again every single week <laughs> this guy he he knows he's a loser and he always apologizes for it, but then he still does it again. Because it could easily be prevented. Where it's just like, oh, we're we're, so, we're supposed to be feel bad for this guy. Where he's like Christmas or New Year's, he's like, oh, I'm alone. I'm this like, is like like the, like the you lose, have somebody right like, there. This is like the loser version of like abusive relationship. Like where he just keeps oh my god lying, keep getting away with it because he doesn't do anything. I'm telling you, man. Like this man, like the, he like at the end of this show. The, the, the entire series. No, no, this man. man the has manga's... to end up alone. The manga's still ongoing. I know, but if this guy wants to redeem himself in any way, this fucking creator, <laughs> leave this man single. <laughs> leave him no. alone. I, I think I think the author is, is a fucking genius because this show is so. Oh my god! It, it's 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 really bad, but it's really good too. Like I can't stop I know. watching. This shit. Everybody's talking about the show <laughs> like, for, the mean... wrong <laughs> for the wrong reasons. Like we, we love this show for the wrong reasons, and I mean, we can't that's what, stop. That's what people the say about a like genius. That's what people say about reality TV shows too. They don't say they're good. Dude, no, no, no. I've I've seen the Kardashians. I've I've seen bits and pieces of Tiger King. All right, this shit blows that stuff out of the water. <laughs> 
<laughs> like this shit cannot be compared to other trash TV. But if you the can bachelor, call it trash anime, yeah, you know, like this shit is like, oh, it just gets you in the feels in all sorts of ways, and you just want to like rip oh, off the, the feels. Sky. Just, just no, the 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 like basically the not the good feels, David. Uh, not the good feels, but just like <laughs> it just it just it gets you bouncing all over the place, right? Like you love this girl and you want her to just like do well and like have everything work out for her, but then she's like. Uh, like head over heels for this one loser that's com- that makes you just want to kill him, but you can't because he's not real. And then like you just know <laughs> that he's gonna keep going because he's an MC, so he has plot armor. And now you just have to like just just watch this guy and just feel the pain of knowing that this shit is gonna go on for at least one season. And in the manga, it's ongoing, so you know that shit's still going on. That makes you just like infuriated. Like I don't know why I can't stop, but it's so good. I. Dude, like another thing with, with for your David, like like one again, he always he, besides just like you know being repetitive about how, calling himself a loser, but at the same time when um when every time where it's like uh where he's where he always says like I don't have a shot with Chizuru, I don't have a shot with Chizuru, and then just like doesn't fucking move on, and it's just like at the same time where it's just it's just repeating it over and over again, where it's just like I don't have a shot, but at the same time we're gonna keep this going. It's just like what the fuck's the point, dude? And, and it's, see, like that it's, that stuff is like see, I play like. I don't know, that thing, I blame the author for that, just because that's, that's such a, a convenient thing just to drag on the show. And, like, that's why I, like, I don't know, like, I, that's why I can't agree with Ku saying that it, it's, uh, I don't know, whatever genius it is, like, it's just drag, like, a convenient device to use to drag on the show, so. Well, I, I call him a genius because I would have dropped it already if he wasn't. Like, you, you're right. <laughs> It's 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 horrible. People shouldn't be watching this shit. But he does it in a way where it makes it so that you can't stop. Like he's dropping hints just, that, yeah, of course, no, because like of course he has no chance, right? No fucking. I'm chance. only watching because you guys. <laughs> well, like, but we're not we're not the only ones. There's others too, like you mentioned. There's others that are constantly watching this or reading this manga, and they want to know how it ends. And it's probably it's due to the way taste. that the author is like playing it out. I mean, like I said, it's 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 trash anime, but it's like you just can't stop. This like, is the real you, trash taste right here. It's the real oh trash boy, taste. yeah, you know. A... And then he's always like making Chizuru look like this girl in denial who doesn't know what she wants. When you can clearly see that she she knows what she's doing, right? She's a smart, you know, independent girl. But he's he's showing moments of weaknesses like every now and then, like with it's the grandma, bit. with this, and now at the end where she was like hiding behind that temple, the fortune. Saying that, oh, like the the love of your life is close by, and it that, that causes her to like have doubts about like how she truly feels about the guy. You know, like there's just these little like tidbits that makes it seem like she is going to end up with him somehow, oh in some way. Any like romantic feeling that that she would get or develops for this guy would be so just. I mean, I don't want to say unrealistic. So I mean, it's just like it feels so like, un- unnatural. Like it just like she knows all of the ways that he's such a that he's a loser. Like, there is no way that she should be falling for this guy. Even if he did, like, somehow, like, save her from, like, jumping from that boat. Like, there's no um, way, like, like. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the thing with that is, it's it could just be just physical attraction. Just because of the fact that. <laughs> you know, because it's, it's one of those things where, I, I forget the terminology for it, but if you spend enough time with a person, right, eventually you'll, you'll go it's to called, have feelings yeah. for them. Yeah, it's called getting right. friend zone. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no! Like not, not that. But you'll just like, you'll you'll slowly grow an attraction to him. I forgot what they called it. They they did it in like South Park too. When when Wendy like had to do this project with Cartman, right? But what I'm saying is like that's that's the the, the principle, the idea. I do remember that episode, yeah. Right, yeah, where where she doesn't really love the guy, but because she's spending so much time with him, that she starts to have these fantasies and dreams about him, and then she has to, like kiss the guy to to break off any of those like feelings that she had. So maybe this is the same thing. Probably not. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. It, it, it's the only thing I could think of that would make sense. That's like, sure, that's one part. I would think, if anything, like, I don't know, any other, like, you, if the guy wasn't a loser, like, he get friend zone. I don't know what it, you'd call it, but like, when he is a loser and you have to, you're forced to spend all this time with him, I don't see how you develop any feelings for this guy. When, when, when they were at that, uh, that hotel, no way anybody would, would run from that situation. And this bitch did. I'm thinking, like, dude, you, oh my god, like that part, and it was just like, and the, I, like first, like, and Rook it's is just telling I, everybody I, how exactly it is. Like, she, basically, she's just coming out and saying this shit. I'm like, yes, tell them, tell them. And then like, again, this author, like, he's just dragging it on by saying he's using the plot, the, the stupid plot device of 
like, oh, I only love Chizuru, so I only have to go for her. So, but this guy's a fucking bitch. He's a loser. Like, there's yeah, like, he, so, it's just, so I mean, uh, the part of it's the character, but the part is the author too for making him like, yeah. use that plot device to, like, constantly like, like block any progression. Oh, hey man, yeah. so, he get, so he it's gave like, him. So it's like any other rom com, like, or basically where like, yeah, you use use a stupid excuse to block progression in a story so you can keep dragging it on. But he gave our MC a part time job. <laughs> sure. And Ruka's working right there. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that's the same uniform from the opening, so not too much of a surprise. I really hope this man just just loses everything. <laughs> but well, I'm kind I don't of think it's gonna happen. I'm kind of curious now too because they only have like what three episodes left, and they still haven't introduced the fourth girl yet. So, oh, I mean, nothing's gonna get resolved though. Like like how David right. said, the manga's still going. So right, but I I was kind of hoping that they'll showcase her more, just because I had I want to see who the whole cast is like. Dude, especially can... with like, especially with Megumi as like the, the VA, right? Like the, yeah. the VA for Megumi is doing her as well. Oh, like, I, I want to see like how she she plays the character. So, dude, the worst part is that like I can easily see the last episode, season two confirmed, because <laughs> I can easily see the show because it's already popular in China, and I can see the show being popular enough on Crunchyroll where they say, "Oh, the numbers look good. Why don't we just make another season? Easy that money. Means you can join us again, oh, David. Oh God, no! It's oh, like. Yeah. Our favorite MC. Oh, we have no. to. When Sword Art is over, we need a shit show. This no. is the shit show. This is that shit show, David. <laughs> this summer, I'm done. summer fucking I'm done. sucks. <laughs> I've never like ranted so much about anime shows I did this summer. I know the show was so fucking hype, and then I just no, it wasn't. I knew it was gonna be bad. <laughs> I should have yeah, listened. Yeah. I don't. Know, we're gonna have to watch the, the one time where Reddit podcast. was right, and they're shitting on the manga. I should have listened. No, we have to look at the previous podcast and see how hyped David was for this new season. <laughs> I don't think he's very hype. I don't know. Yeah. It says Re- Re-Zero was definitely... Like, I, think, I was hyped for Re-Zero uh, and Snafu. Yeah. But yep. I guess I yeah. got to high school. So. Yes. Oh, man. But yeah, this... I'm oh, Yeah, this show, dude. God damn, man. I hate this guy. Both the author and the MC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't know what made me more angry. You know this show says? or Sword Art? Author is just laughing all the way to the bank. Actually, Sword Art yeah. author is because he makes way more money. But yeah, him too. But I actually feel like Sword Art thinks he's a, like he's a genius. <laughs> this guy, I think, like I, I kind of like he is a genius. Kinda... This guy, <laughs> you know, does, other... do you think that the rent a girlfriend guy just thinks he knows he's playing the audience? There's a part of oh, I actually agree with Cool. Yeah. Like this guy, like I think he easily knows he's trolling people. I think. Right. I, yeah. hope, I hope that's the case. Whereas, I really like. Hope this... I really, hope the, I really hope the art, the like author, isn't actually like feels like he's the MC of Rent a Girlfriend. <laughs> I'd feel bad, very bad for him in a sense. I was like, dude, you, you never you know, know, man. You, uh, that's why I don't know. I don't know. Like, but like, you, see this, you, see, you see this a lot too in like a lot of meta, like manga and anime, where like where the story is like, oh, the main character is a manga artist, and like, and yeah. the plot is, oh, we have to write, have to write a romance novel, but I a romance manga, but I don't think about romance. Oh, yeah. here's, here's like my assistant who's a girl who has to help me. Yes, yes. So, but no, but the, like I said, the SAO guy, I legitimately think I think he delusional. thinks he's a genius. He's very fucking delusional. It's because yeah. of his fans. His fans make him believe that. I don't know what to think anymore. But I know, right? God, I'm done. That's that's it. Oh right. God. So that's it for my girlfriend. And then you guys mm-hmm. get to talk about Orisuki because I've had to watch the OVA. God, so, David, it was like the ending made up for the entire thing. It so, was the ending was so good. This is all you guys, so oh, okay. Uh, cool. I'll let you go ahead. So it it took me a while. To, I'm kind of glad they did a recap on Orisugi in the, in the beginning of this because yeah. I kind of forgot what the whole bet was about. But in the beginning of this, they kind of like reiterated the the last episode. They explained the the bet. Right, they they laid down the ground rules, and then it was basically the 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 finals of the baseball game for their school where Sunshine was the pitcher for, and then um, that was basically it. Right, they they do this thing, they have a little bet, and then based on who won the the tournament would declare like the end of the the, the challenge, and like oh well, like oh god, here we go, like who's gonna win, right? Oh, of course, it's the MC. So. Um, <laughs> Like it turns out that you know the MC had like a secret plan all along, and he got it figured out. And then like uh, I think the guy was like Hose Hose Kun. 
like apparently he was kind of sneaky too. Like he's not a perfect protagonist that, that everyone thought he was. Oh, he had like a dark sinister side to himself as well. And then he thought that he like he pulled a fast one over the MC, but it turns out that he uh had the last laugh. So uh, and then like I said, David, like this wrapped up everything so perfectly. Like it doesn't salvage it to be the perfect anime, but it was uh the, the closure that they give you at the very oh, end. Oh, cool. Cool. Really on, yeah, yeah, before we talk about the closure, I'll just like talk I'll talk up to that point so then we can both then talk about the, the ending. Okay. But also like with Sunshine's previously good like you know, best friend, fucking terrible. Like actually that entire team, like why why the fuck are you playing sports if you're playing like selfish? Like or I don't know, I should say, why are you playing a playing a team based sport? But you're playing it selfishly. It's supposed to be a team-based game, and these all these people are like, "Man, fuck Sunshine. This guy is way too good." Like, and then he basically just hating him because of it. It's like, guys, you're playing a team game. Like, like, like the, this is on the coach. The coach be playing, like, be like, you know, reiterating this. Like, you're on a team. Like, you're not just one person. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, <clears throat> I also like. I, I couldn't remember. Like, like kind of like you. I forgot like what the whole challenge was. Mm-hmm. And I just realized just how fucking stupid the challenge is. And basically, it's like, in a sense, you're trying to like gather up berets, and basically the winner, and the, it's basically the winner gets like uh, uh, Pansy's love, or you know, where they go out with her, or whatever it is. But I was like, at the right. same time, it's like, like it was just kind of stupid because it's like, what the hell's the point of that? Like, it's just basically, it's like, it's pretty much her choice. But I guess sure, we'll go along with it. Yeah. Um, I I forgot about that other girl, the uh, Sasanqua or whatever it was. Like, she's my favorite girl. By far, I think she's the best one. Oh, the one I went from pink hair to brown hair or whatever? Yeah, that's that's by far my best one. I completely forgot about her, her, but when she popped in, I was like, oh, damn, I forgot about you. And then she, you know, breaks up some some lines. I was like, yes, this is why you're my favorite. You mean Um, uh, her her new name now is Miss Friday. (laughs) (laughs) That's right, that's right. (laughs) What, what, What she said for Friday? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, like, you could be yeah, my Friday. Yeah, I was like, okay. Carol came up to her, she's like, "Hey, you know, my Friday's free. You could yeah. be my Friday." <laughs> okay, okay. Oh shit, dude. Um, I also like before that too. Like, like this guy's just wandering around in like a in-ground, like indoor base, like uh, baseball field, yeah. and people are just lost. Like, it's like, what, what, like, what? Why is everybody getting lost? And something like it's just like circular. I have to just step outside, and you're fine. I, I kind of thought like that whole thing was. Kind of stupid, but at the same time, it's whatever. It's Orisuki. Right. Um, <clears throat> and, then, uh, and then it's like, I also like for the like you know, increasing like the bets, you know, kind of going back to Snafu was, um, <clears throat> was what I don't know what it's what's up with like people that like, they make these bets and they add on more to it. Like you can't talk to anybody or her like at all. It's just like, why? Like who the fuck cares? And where it's just like, you know, like, I don't know what's like their obsession with like always adding those just in anime in general. I'm not like just, I guess it's just for high end drama, you know, because they're high school, they take everything seriously. You have to honor the challenge or the condition set. Okay. I suppose. Right. It's um, stupid, but it, it was also cool to see where the bench began and basically where the bench be- like, like where, how it all started. I thought that was actually really cool. Mm-hmm. And, um, and who would have thought it actually was. Sunshine was the first victim. I know, right? <laughs> oh god! Oh, how the turntables! Oh god! Dude, it was. I, I first like like I didn't like I don't think I cared much for Sunshine until this OVA. Uh-huh. Like I don't know, like even like before, like when they had like their beach episode or water park episode. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I was laughing my ass off. I thought like, dude, dude, like you know, how are you gonna like go just a whole different route and just end up with Sunshine? <laughs> but anyway, um, the one thing I thought was kind of random though is also with uh, Sunshine's like you know previous friend. Where they were just like in the middle of the tournament, there was no talking even with this guy, and he just had a change of heart out of nowhere. It just didn't make any sense, like because there was none of that talk. There was or there was none of that talk that was actually happening with him. I don't remember his name. Uh, I think um, it was like Sheba or something. Yeah, Dude, um, but did you was there something and I just missed it. No, I, I think what happened was it's just the fact that it's finals and they just really want to win, so he decided to just let like to play as a team. Right, just plays a team to uh, finally grow up and like plays a team so they can win this, you know? Yeah, because okay, that makes sense then. Right. Because there was like, because normally like you have some sort of conversation beforehand, but mm-hmm. there was like really nothing done. If anything, Sunshine was acting exactly the same with him before. Right. But there was no difference. Like it was still the same. And I thought, I thought that was kind of just out of, and that, that wasn't really care. Like that was I very. Mean, did, did, did they show one scene where Gerald comes up to him while he was talking to Mac about Sunshine, and he said, "You know, like, did that you even true. try to work it with Sunshine?" But that was like way back when. So yeah. I don't know if that was just before the tournament or whatever. But um, 
yeah, I guess like after that point, that's when he slowly started to mature, and this is when he finally let it go. That's the only thing I can think of. Dude, Joro's Jiro, like evil side is the best. Like this, <laughs> the, I, I love like that, like a uh, that like side of him, I guess, where he basically just he just he just, he just tells it how it is. Yeah, it's yeah, so kind of, good. Yeah, oh, it's God. incredibly intimidating. So I can easily see why Pansy likes that side of him because I think it's just way better than his just you know suck up to everybody kind of form. Uh, or side, I guess. Right. Um, also, like the whole thing with like the when they, I I, feel like I was kind of lame when the, basically those two girls confessed to hose, and basically he's like nah, and then basically didn't like he's like I deny you both, and then they just you know, like kind of immediately got over it. They're just like yeah, you know like, whatever. Um, I kind of thought like that whole thing was kind of just dumb and yeah, kind it's kind of pointless. Yeah, it, it, it was. The, what was the point of that anyway? Right. Um. And then let's see. I'm just looking there. The clue that he's talking about. Um, okay. And then we get to the ending. I think we basically covered everything. And then the dude, the, the ending. I it was basically something I wasn't expecting. For, like at first, when he said that first name, when he said you know Pansy's actually name, I paused. I had no clue who the fuck <laughs> he was talking about because I'm so used to just hearing Pansy. And then he just right. he basically said her entire name. I kind of paused. I was like, wait, who the fuck is this? I was like, is this a different person that we don't know? And then it being Pansy. But then the follow-up. Cool. What was your thought? It was the fucking follow-up that just threw me completely <laughs> off guard. Like after like like everything up to that point was was very like stereotypical, right? Like nothing amazing. But it was this part that changed the whole thing for me. I did not expect them to just like like when he said, I forgot what exactly what he said, but you know, it was like I'm gonna I'm gonna go down the way I said I was, or something like that. Like I'm a man of my word, you know. Yeah. I was like, I was like, what does that mean? Oh, he's just gonna like confess to Pansy, and then like finally, like we um, all figured that yeah. right, you know. And then he he does that shit. He does a, a ninety degree turn, and he confesses to all of them. And at the at very end of that, we thought that that was it. Like he was just playing. No, this guy was dead serious. Like, all right, <laughs> you're my Monday, you're Tuesday, you're Wednesday. And then, oh, wait. And then the other girl comes up like, yeah, I don't have uh, like anyone for Friday. So you'll be my Friday. And it, <laughs> this guy legit was trying to create his harem. Like from the get-go, that's what his plan was, right? So now it comes full circle. He's finally got his harem. And now that everyone's in love with him, right? Like he was like, oh, okay, maybe this will work out. But nope, like it backfires. Like, of course, like they're not going to want to be part of his harem. So they just like leave him alone. And it turns out that it was all part of this genius plan to make sure that Pansy has friends because at the very beginning, that's what she wanted this whole time. And then he goes to cheer up his best bro, and it turns out that they had a bench scene too, but it wasn't the bench, yeah. right? Yeah. It was just a regular bench. So thank God for that because if it went that route, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not like I have another to... twist, man. Another twist. Yeah. So it was like twists every turn. And it's it just makes you want to like, wow, how are they really going to end this? You know. Um, and then at, at the very end, like it's, it's really satisfying because it shows that, you know, he does, it's implied, end, yeah. right. It's, it's implied that he does end up with yeah. Pansy. So yeah, for the true ending, but right. there was a whole thing. It was, I don't know, like th they wrapped it up. I thought so well, like they right. basically were piling up like loose ends. I completely forgot about just mm -hmm. like, or, um, cause I do believe, cause I'm pretty sure they, they probably showed that flashback before, like when he first met up with Pansy and like said, like, you know, I'll find your friends. I just don't remember that. Not 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 the not the promise part. I think it showed the part where she did meet up with him, but none of the yeah none of the details about. Oh, another conversation. Okay, well, right. I, that, that's still fine. I, even if yeah. they did kind of just throw that in for the for the OVA, I still thought like all of it was. Uh, I thought it was well done. I also didn't really expect it first because when he first like 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 how you said like when he first like you know made it a pansy, I was like, oh, it's kind of figured. It was like whatever. But right. then he basically made that turn, and then just basically like you know then uh, and then basically like he said it to all of them. I was like, what the fuck's happening right now? I was like, is this actually going to happen? And I mean, it backfired, but it was still hilarious. And just like the whole plan of just, it was just, the, I, I I rated this actually higher than the series itself because yeah, um, the series, the series, it started off so strong. Mm -hmm. It was basically because you got to know about, um, you know, like, you know, um, like, you know, Joro's all his backstory, basically his Jekyll and Hyde type of thing. Right. And then also, we were in the the the, the Hero Academia hype phase where we're listening to Deku, and he's just cussing these chicks out. It's like, oh damn, what the hell's going on with this guy? <laughs> and but then it just kind of it just took. I thought it went down fat. I thought it was going downhill pretty quick. Uh, it just couldn't it couldn't hold up. But then I thought right. like, how they wrapped this up was just it was it was it was hilarious. Even though you know, the true ending is still with Pansy, but how they went about it, I thought it was awesome. 
yeah, it was it was very like unique to this anime. They they didn't like break their their flow, right? Like their the main point. So I I think like I said, it, like like you mentioned, it was started out really strong and then it fell flat. And then, uh, like, you'll start to pick up again towards the end, but they're just throwing so much at you mm-hmm. that it made you think that, oh, there's no way that they can end this in 12 episodes properly. Yeah. And they did it, right? They left you with this yeah. giant finger of this baseball game or this challenge. And then this OVA comes out, like, a season or two later <laughs> and wraps it up so perfectly. And it's like, oh, man, if only you came out right after episode 12 or whatever. Like, this would have been, like, a really good right. anime. Yep. Right. Because I think we gave it, like, a what, five or six? Out of ten for score, um, I think I gave it a seven. Actually, I, may, I think I gave it a seven. It was basic, um, right. but the, the OVA though, I think I gave it. I gave it an eight. Like, I mean, I still thought it was really good, but like a, yeah. a chunk of the OVA, I thought was just kind of, eh. But then the ending, I thought was like, uh, I thought the ending is like where it kind of actually like really kind of got got yeah. a main yeah. point. Put it back. Um, on the, yeah. If they didn't, if they didn't have that that little extra scene at the end where it was implying that he got with Pansy, would you still have been okay with it? No, because really? I think that's. Like, been- like it would have been funny, but there was still no closure, you know. Oh yes, yeah. so like for me, you, you like that? Yes, yes. I like it to come around to a full <laughs> circle and just like be wrapped up neatly in a nice little package, right? That's okay. that's what I like, right? But then, like the reason why I like this 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 series was because in the very beginning, like the first four episodes, those subtle hints or drops of like certain literature, like famous literature, that made you like kind of guess or it will give you hints as to what was going to be played out during during that, that episode yeah and then uh you know i thought it was very unique for a like a rom-com like this oh yeah, yeah. and then like and then like i said it fell flat because it just became very generic and they're introducing all these characters that you didn't really care for and you're trying to f- like figure out exactly how this ties to the story and then yeah. yeah they ended it perfectly and then at the very end i was looking it up to you um he says like yeah, the moon is very beautiful tonight, or something like that. But apparently, that's also a, a like translated to "I love you" uh, in yeah, some ski. kind of like Japanese yeah. literature. Or... It basically, like moon means like ski, and right. they, they say the same thing for like or uh, as well. So yeah, yep. so yeah, so the way that the ended, I thought was perfect, right? Like he's with Pansy, they're walking down the street, like when it's uh, during the nighttime, and then he says. Yeah, like the moon is very beautiful tonight, yeah. and then they slowly transcended the, the the camera to the sky, but it was like a, a cloudy yeah. night, and you can't even see the moon. So, I yeah, like, that that cool. Holy right. shit. yeah, and like you didn't. Even, I was like, wait, why? Like, why is he saying that the moon is beautiful tonight? You can't even see it; it's cloudy. And then I was looking it up because I, I had a like, I feel I had a feeling it had a deeper meaning than, than mm-hmm. what I would think of. And then like when I looked it up, that's what it meant. Like that can also tr- uh, like translate to "I love you." Yeah, if only I didn't know what the, the word was for for moon, I would have maybe right. looked it up. Yeah, so it's like, man, they ended it on like this, like like high IQ shit too, where you had to look it up if you were if you're like if you're illiterate in a sense to the Japanese uh, culture or like uh, folk tale or whatever. So yeah, I thought they they ended everything perfectly. Like like I said from the from the beginning, it was kind of it was kind of funny, but it was kind of generic. I thought. And to the point where he confessed his love to all of them to create his harem, that's when everything just like like skyrocketed <laughs> oh, exponentially for me, you know. <laughs> like it was it was perfect. You got a little bit of the, the bromance, you got a little bit of the harem, you got the fan service, you know, and then you got the closure that you wanted. So, so what'd you give this? So it went from a five and six to like an eight or a nine. Nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I believe I gave it an eight. Um but, but I gave it another or one point, like I said, like mentioned a little earlier, higher than the show itself. Mm-hmm. Because um, I think just overall, I'm just taking like what the OVA gave us, mm-hmm. and just like w- with it actually wrapping up and like doing it well, because a lot of right. shows uh, fumble the ending pretty hard, and they basically, I think they nail it like right on the head, like basically like, how like just like the like how the show has gone throughout the entire like, the, throughout the entire series. I thought just like, it basically wrapped up how the show is. Right. They, they didn't kind of go out of its norm. It wasn't you know basically kind of out of left field. It basically it made sense. Right. So oh. yeah, this is really good. Like yeah. I, I'm hoping with the I don't know if it came out yet, but the Bunny Girl Senpai uh, OVA. I hope the they do it. Uh, yeah, the movie or whatever. I hope yeah, they wrap yeah. up. Movie. I don't know when that's out coming for, out. It's been out for a while. Oh, has it? Yeah. There you go. Right. I, I watched so it. I haven't watched it yet. The movie, but really... I'm hoping that, that that it's as good as this one when it comes down to closure. It's, it's really good. Um, I don't know about closure, but like it's whatever. Like because it had that cliffhanger for the regular season. It's Saw, right, like, saw the cliffhanger in the movie, with with that girl. Okay, hey, you guys could always, uh, if you guys want to, you guys can always, you know, if you watch it, you guys can always talk about it next week. 
Yeah. We'll have Nogata yeah. High School next week. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Whatever you say. But yeah, if 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 you if you've like, seen the the series but you haven't seen this OVA yet, I would definitely watch it. You'll feel a lot better about the payoff that just, you get at the end. Yeah, let it go. Just get to the OVA, and yeah. it, it it does well. Even though we kind of gave it away, but right, <laughs> give it a shot. <laughs> but yet to experience the journey, sir. The journey is worth. Yes, yes, yes. Promise. Uh, that is all. Yeah, that's all I got. All right. yep. Is there any other shows you want to talk about? I haven't gotten uh, any. Cool. How, uh, how about Uzaki with uh, what trash taste uh, talked about your uh, your your show? All right, so I get it. Everyone has their own opinions, right? <laughs> but apparently, Uzaki Chan is very boring, according to some famous uh, YouTubers, um, and I find offense to that. But you know, that's that's just me. I'm biased, right? I love Uzaki Chan just because it it helps me relax, and it, it's it, it's my it's my bleach. You know, it's my purification. After watching all these shitty shows, Uzaki Chan is what I watch to. Kind of just relax and just just feel good about myself and in this week's episode they introduce uzaki's mom and you know maybe i have a thing for milfs but man <laughs> this this we keep... she is mm, a banger you know again Ku, you're, you're you're at that age it's, funny, so man. it's perfectly hey, natural it's right i've been like this since 18. i don't plan to change <laughs> sir. okay well never mind then right <laughs> But yeah, so this week's episode was actually pretty funny because it turns out that the mom is kind of weird too. Uh, Uzaki invites uh, the guy over uh, for some reason, and then uh, apparently there's like a like she has some kind of like um, what's, what's the word? Like she thinks that he's into her, but she's really not. But she's basically just this housewife who watches dramas. Like oh, oh boy, oh, I so guess delusional. So, yeah, so she's very delusional, and then like when, when this is the best character. Yeah. So before he comes in the house, she's watching this drama, and it's about this guy who's like in love with this married woman, and then they're trying to have this like forbidden love. You sure it's and a then, drama and not porno? Uh, I don't know, but yeah. So then like this this guy comes over, and then she's get, he's giving her like these I guess false signals or whatever that she that he's into her, and then like he wants to do her and Uzaki at the same time. <laughs> okay, uh, that's definitely a porno. <laughs> Right, right. But in, in fact, he just wants, they have cats and he wants to pet the cat, right? So, what? Uh, yeah. So, like, a lot of, like, That's things going on here. That's a for pussy. Wait, yeah. I was going to say, what kind of right. cat? What kind of we talking? No, no, no. Actual cat cats. And then, like, uh, like I said, this, this whole show was just basically about, like, this delusional mom that Uzaki has. And then that's basically the whole show or the whole episode. So, uh, cool. but yeah. To go back real quick, Kud, just to kind of back you up. Like okay, somebody goes into a like if somebody goes into a slice of life show. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure this is a slice of life comedy, right? Yeah. If you're going into a slice of life comedy show, like I don't know what really you're trying to expect. Like I mean, if you're basically going, you if you're watching a slice of life and you're saying, "Oh, it was boring," well, it's like no shit, it's a slice of life. Mm-hmm. Like what are you ex- like what are you like truly expecting? I mean, there's a lot of show like a lot of slice of life I've watched that I think are awesome, but they've been boring. But they've been but I mean, they're a slice of life. I know going into it. Like what I'm actually getting myself into, right? Like you know, Nana and Biori, everything that I was like, honestly, Nana and Biori, it was like to most people. I mean, I honestly think it was boring as hell, as hell too, but it was still enjoyable to watch. I like, mean, but that's y- what y- Nana and Biori was. Eurocamp like, slice of life too, and no one says that's yeah, boring. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, Eurocamp is still boring, but it was awesome. <laughs> like there's so many other shows where I feel like they're, they're boring, but I know going into it that I'm not expecting much. It's just basically. You're just supposed to enjoy it. It's not like one of those where you're supposed to like get like crazy feels. You're not supposed to get enraged by people. It's basically you're just supposed to watch it, enjoy, and then just have like a little bit of like, happiness in your life and then move on. Like that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, you know, like throwing, me, a, yeah. throwing a chuckle here and there, you know, just yeah. enjoy it, right? Just kick back and relax. Like if you're expecting some kind of like crazy action, you're you're watching the wrong show, sir. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's like, a lot, a lot of like yes, Go ahead, sorry, go ahead, a lot of killed animation shows or slice of life too but people love that shit so yeah i mean i think when i was younger i definitely thought it was boring and i was like who's you know who's watching this but i can definitely i can appreciate there's an audience for that now so yeah, yeah. especially since i've gotten older i've actually liked slice of life a lot more now <laughs> And then just the fact that they threw in the fact that the doujinshi or whatever is like way more interesting. It's like it's no oh, shit. You, if if that's what you're looking for, then yeah, of course that's gonna like pique your interest more than this. Okay. I just Let's yeah, go, go against the doujinshi because I because from what you guys have told me before the podcast, <laughs> what, it, what a lot of like what it's about. <laughs> right. It's kind of ruining it for a slice of life. Like it's more of like 
I mean, you, it's like you're not wanting like more like uh, you're not wanting more like something happening for that show. You just want to see that stuff. Right. It's it's and then more of like because you don't give a shit about the story. You just want to see that character in those mm-hmm. situations and that stuff. Right. So that that excuse is I mean, poor and terrible. Right. I mean, to be fair, it's like the non hentai ones. Like a lot of times, it's because I mean, it's it's like other any other fanfic where it's like you don't like the the official pairing or it's like the author is taking so long to get get any romance going that you just want something. So I can understand right. from that point. See, if we had if we had Taylor here for this episode, she knows all about Dojinchi. <laughs> Sorry, I told you out. <laughs> no, I mean it's it's fine, right? Like everyone's got their own taste. I get it, but you know, you don't don't sell something short just because it's not like something that that interests you. You know, it's I find it to be dumb. very insulting. But yeah. you know, like I said, everyone's like has the right to their own opinion. So it's that's whatever. the prop. That's the problem with like yeah, with a lot of like analysis. Any like any like nerdy media like people don't all people cannot like find like the other perspective so yeah yeah they, they only well, see one they only see one side but it's like really the essence of a slice of life is basically enjoying it's not going to be action-packed it's going to be a lot of time boring as hell but right. it's that's what it is and it's just some people you know people like that but at the same time when you basically go into a slice of life and say oh, it was boring no shit most of them right. are yeah, like, oh, there's no plot. There's no like interesting event happening. There's no yeah. like like okay. heightened situation. You ask, this is when you ask them the questions. Like, oh, slice of life, boring, no plot. What's your life like, sir? It's a slice yeah. of life. It's basically like, do you have interest shit, interesting shit well, going I, on? I was, I was gonna say too, because like, because like, Clannon's pretty boring from the majority of it, but like, until you get to like the actual good part, but like, they still. So yeah, I, 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 I guess if you're looking for, too. yeah, I mean, if you're looking for that, fine, I guess, but that it took the like what. Eight episodes for it to start to get serious. I mean, if, uh, Clanad? Clanad? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you? I don't know if you guys have seen it. Nope. Yeah, I've I've seen it a yeah. long time ago, so I forgot, I forgot the, the really boring parts. Yeah, like <laughs> the first the first eight episodes, those basically just introductions of all these different girls, just one guy, and it turns out he has you know uh, issues with his father because of an accident, and then you know like towards the end, oh, it turns out that the girl that he fails for is, has a sickness and she's going to die, but she's. She's going to give birth to this kid first, and then she dies, and it leaves him with the same incident that his dad. You know, like it's like Damn. super Jeez. intense drama, but then it, that, that yeah, it, it goes from like spoilers right there. <laughs> oh yeah, twenty year twenty years spoiler. Spoiler. My bad. Uh, but yeah, it, it takes them like so long f- for you to get any kind of like like crazy action or like some kind of like heightened situation that it's it just doesn't matter. So I'm I'm kind of surprised that you know people are treating like every slice of life that it has to have something crazy happen in it oh, so. but, okay is clinic considered slice of life or drama i would consider more drama because of what happens at the yeah. end but like right. i mean it, it baits you so yeah in or the does beginning, it, okay. yeah in the beginning it's more slice of life yeah so. i just feel like a lot of those people who basically say slice slice of life are boring i just don't think they're old enough yet they don't enjoy it they, they don't appreciate that yet i don't know though yeah. i have no clue I'll eventually, like, I'm still planning on having Uzaki-chan done before, like, the end of the season so I can actually talk about uh, it. Yeah, like, even though, two or three uh, weeks left, Strand. Yeah, even though, like, I'm, a, I'm actually, I'm a huge fan of Slice of Life. Like, so it's, um, I already kind of know, like, where I'm going to, like, where I'm going to kind of fall into. I'm, I definitely know I'll be on Ku's side about this. So from what I've seen and what Crunchyroll has shown in, like, their posts, I'm like, damn, I would love this show. Why am I not watching this yet? Like, it's basically me, but, or it, it basically, you know, for, but I just haven't seen it yet. Anyway, sorry, I got on a rant about that. All right, well, we're gonna end the show because we've been going on way too long. Probably should, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna be it for this week. I want to thank the audience for being here. Thanks. Thanks, chat. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for being on the panel. <laughs> we had a lot. Of, again, more heated discussions. Dude, this fucking summer season needs to end. Some tired these shows, like I making me. I rant. don't know. Because- I think we have pretty good conversations and ranting and also rage. I, 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 I enjoy our times together, sir. I, I David, David, this is a slice of life. It's not <laughs> It's not exciting enough for me. Mm-hmm. It's very boring. Yeah. I just need fucking sword art and trick. I can get the hell out of here. No, and, sword and, art and rent a girlfriend. It started. And rent a girlfriend. All these trolls <laughs> need to get the hell out of here. <laughs> uh, right. oh, that's going to be it for us. So we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.
At least Taylor didn't bring back a haunted ghost boy to haunt you guys. She brought a terrible ass drawing though. <laughs> oh no, it's over. Yep. It's over. It's haunted. <laughs> yep. I'll uh, I'll send you a picture later, Koo. Cool. Uh, I would like to know. Your oh thought. no! Don't you, don't you send me that shit. <laughs> Actually, Haven't you seen a grudge? That's how it spreads, bro. <laughs> you stay over there, and I don't want to see shit. I don't want none of these paintings. Cool. When you, when you come, when you come over, it's gonna be the first thing you see. <laughs> you fucking. So I'm about to drop kick whoever holds that painting. I'm just saying. <laughs>